I'm always late. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Don't need a heater going on. I'm always late. Don't know why. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 15th of May 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week and will have had, will have a wonderful week ahead of you. We're not doing future perfect here. Uh, let's jump right into the game today. I don't have a, a ton to say about. Uh, things going on because nothing really has gone on that's not the game so let's get into it Woo. oh there we go there's the audio capture uh but yeah no so <laughs> this week has been fairly uh you know well when i say you know do you know uh it's it's been a fairly fair week how, how do i put it any differently um yeah, no, not much has really happened. I've been chilling, grilling. Um, we know this intro. I played this game already. <laughs> um, but yeah, on the last week's stream, uh, you know, this is the start of the game. We're two and a half hours in. Uh, I have two badges already. We got two badges. Um, and you can <laughs> the stuff on the back. Uh, we've also got a wonderful party of four Pokemon. Uh, Nonogram is still struggling. He's still getting there. He's only level 11, but he'll get there one day. And, uh, we got a good old Carrot, which somehow carried the entire gym, and Kipperoni, who I worry is going to carry too much of what, you know, what is about to happen there. Uh, but, you know, let's, uh, let's put ourselves beside that. And let me just, ooh, you can see any of that. <laughs> Gotta pull up my nose. Uh, but yeah, no, so, um... Yeah, other than that, you know, we'll continue the game. So we've explored the entirety of Duford Town. Duford Town being the, uh, the second... Actually, even better, let's pull up a map. I say, let's pull up a map. I try to walk over to the, the map there. But no, we've got a map right here. So we started the game over, uh, here in Little Root Town. Wandered up north to Odale. Oldale? Oldale. Not Odale. It's always called Odale. Uh, wandered over to Petalburg. Wanted up to Rustboro and then decided to go, well, this is a bit blocked, let's just go down to the, <laughs> down to Duford Town. Um, and from Duford Town, as long as you've gotten the Devon goods from, uh, the cave, you technically can continue. Uh, so this guy will take you over to Slateport, and we're going to Slateport to continue the game. Goodbye, trainers, I didn't need to, I didn't need to fight here. Uh... But yeah, I don't know, like, uh, the, uh, simultaneously a fair bit and not a lot has happened in the world. Um, I guess the big thing for me is that I'm following, like, a bunch of tech news and, uh, you know, we're, we're in, we're in rumor mill because, uh, you know, NVIDIA is going to announce probably the RTX 4060 Ti, let's get into some fights while we're at it. They're probably going to announce the RTX 4060 Ti at Computex, which will be on Monday, the 29th of May, which actually might be before the stream so I might be able to talk about it in two weeks time but until then uh, all we have to go off is um, you know rumors I'm not gonna get my butt kicked by fighting type so that's all right the question is whether I can continue taking him out or not um, this is a bit of a um, I guess a, a short route uh, full of sand, no wild Pokemon going on here um, that you can experience until you get into the city. Well, actually, the city doesn't have wild Pokemon either, but, uh... Well, technically it does, because you can fish, but it's the same wild Pokemon that you can always find when you fish. Um, that also means that you'll have to work your way up to the, the city in order to, uh, to heal, but... Uh, in general, it's not that bad. You know, it's only a handful of trainers. And obviously, this uh, Machop doesn't really have... Uh, you know, what it takes. He doesn't have the chops. Uh, some of these trainers are also, like, you, you might notice, it's like, oh, level 14? That's actually not too bad compared to the gym that I just fought. And the answer is, yeah, actually. <laughs> if you wanted a good opportunity to throw your guy in, now's the chance, I guess. I'm just going to see if I can run up and do the quick heal. And then we're going to fight these people out of order. But here we are, Slateport City, which is, uh, you know, well... They got the lines and everything. I was gonna say, actually, this game has a lot of cities, doesn't it? Like, really big places. Because, even Gold and Silver, it's like, eh, you really got, like, Celadon and Saffron and Goldenrod. Uh, I mean, Vermilion's kind of big, but it's like, it kind of feels like a bunch of houses on a port. There's no, like, I really appreciate this game adding in things like, 
a shipyard. Uh, there's a museum up there. There's lots more landmarks going on in this game. And it kind of makes, you know, the towns feel a bit more unique. Um, you know, I'm thirsty. Oh my gosh. I could go for a soda pop at the seashore house. Okay, sure. Oh no, it's Ricky Berwick. I love you, Ricky. Oh my gosh, the Zigzagoon nose surf already. <laughs> I was not expecting the level 14 Zigzagoon to no surf. Well, uh, you know, we're not getting Nonogram to wing the rest of this, so let's pull out the Gipperoni. Jeez. This is why Zigzagoon is going to be your HM slave, is because you can learn surf, strength, uh, cut. You know, he's all, he's all terrain. Headbutt, even though it doesn't, ha Headbutt does not have the utility of bumping trees in this game. It's, it's, uh, exclusively, uh, just, you know, for shot move now. For attacking shot. Uh, but yeah, no. RTX 4060 Ti rumors, um, we get into the whole discussions about the, the VRAM thing, uh, but I think, you know, better to wait until the cards get announced, because, uh, you know, this, I don't really think there's much point in talking about rumors in general when it comes to hardware, especially when they can get cancelled. Greetings, Blub, how's it going? Um, but like, yeah, hardware can get cancelled really easily, and it's not really, you know, something that is easy to, to predict or judge. And if anything as well, like, you know, what was the last, like, you know, bit of rumored, uh, you know, hardware? Oh my gosh, soft sand, whoa. Um, the last, like, few graphics cards I can remember, like, people talking about and then getting cancelled was the, um, the, the RTX 3000s were going to have double, uh, capacity versions. There was going to be a 20 gigabyte, uh, 3080, there was going to be, uh, first game from this channel. Oh, as in, like, the Game Boy Advance? Nice. Ooh, ooh, here's Azuril. Azuril is a fun Pokemon because it's the pre-evolution of Meryl, but weirdly, Azuril has two properties. Uh, being super hype when I did the first few fights. This game is still super hype, I, even after, you, you know, you come back to it after years and it's still great. That music just gets you going. Uh, but Azuril has two fun properties. One, it's actually normal type, it's not water type. Despite being hard blue and the pre-evolution of Meryl, it's, it's normal. It's weird. Um, uh, the graphics and sound update compared to Gen 1 and 2 with so and so, it is pretty good as well. I still think that there's, you know, like, there's parts of the graphics that, like, can be here and there, but the model, the, the sprites are so much more detailed. Um, and so more colorful as well. And they, you know, they wiggle around so well, the cities have all this stuff going on. Um, and the music is like, you know, it's dramatic as. It's got these timpanies, that's how you know it's dramatic. Uh, the other thing with Azuril I want to know is, uh, Azuril has a... I think actually Azuril is the only basic tackle and tackle fight felt more epic than the fight with Red and Soul. True, true. Um, Azuril is one of, I think, the only Pokemon I know of where its gender ratio changes as it evolves. Usually when a Pokemon, say for example, your starters, has uh, a seven, you know, times chance to be uh, male compared to one times female. It's like seven parts to one. Uh, a lot of Pokemon are 50-50. Azur or Meryl is 50-50. Azuril is 75% female... Is it 75% female, 25% uh, male, or is it the inverse? There's a possibility that Azuril goes under a gender change when it evolves. It's a very interesting uh, factor, and one that probably is going to throw a lot of people off. Uh, I think I played Gen 3, the most out of all the generations, played tons of Sapphire, Ruby, Emerald, and Leaf Green. Then I think as well, like, I think... I haven't actually talked about Leaf Green too much, um, but Leaf Green to me was like a rather interesting um, game because I love how I'm constantly scratching this guy. And he's, he's taking his time, you know, getting getting hit, and then he suddenly has an actual attack. Uh, but Leaf Green, you know, to me, is kind of like there's a bit of a dichotomy shift because it's the first remake. I think I really experienced. I've had ports, I've had, you know, like I had Super Mario Brothers on the Game Boy Color. Um, and it's definitely like, you know, it's a port of Super Mario Brothers. It's not actually a, um, you know, like remaking it. Uh, but then the Game Boy Advance, you know, it had that. 
Uh, some people probably played Super Mario Bros. Advance, some people played, um, maybe, uh, Metroid Zero Mission, um, but there were quite a few of those on the GameCube. Um, whereas, like, before, I don't think we really had that many ports of games. I think it's usually, like, you'd have maybe, a uh, well, actually, no, I take it back a little bit, because there are, like, SNES versions. Um, sorry, how do I phrase it? I said ports, I meant remakes. Um, but I, I will say, you did have, like, SNES versions of games. But I think, yeah, for a lot of people in our generation, it was like, you know, once 3D consoles came out, we weren't remaking 2D games that often. It was, you know, it was the, the next generation. You know, we want to do 3D stuff. And now it's like, well, you know, the Game Boy Advance is the perfect opportunity to do the final touch-ups on those 2D games that do need working. It's like, Metroid 1 did need working, so... Uh, this game is so great, I did not finish the remakes though. Um, I did really enjoy Omega Ruby um, Alpha Sapphire. I think out of all the um, the remakes... Uh, no, I, ca I can't say one is better than the rest. I do personally really like Heart Gold a lot, but that's just because I really like the underlying game a lot. Um, but if anything, I guess none of them are really like bad. They're all they're all great games. They're all really good, good uh, incarnations of the game. It's got two Wingulls. Heart Gold, Soul Silver, uh, were great, exactly. And that Wingull is toast. They finally made the games they wanted to make in Gen Two. I st I still think they, you know, they did make the games they wanted to, but. Um, I think that, you know, coming back to it with your newer sensibilities... Because, I mean, Huggle... Like, I don't, I don't really know if they were rushed or anything. I think it was purely they just had the idea and then... Um, I'm not really too sure if they had a way to integrate how to have double the number of gyms in the game. I know they ran into space limitations, but I'm not too sure if that actually, like, was... Um, you know, like, if they really had anything more planned for the region beyond having the region there and doing the gym challenge again. If that makes sense. I'm not too sure. Because I know, I know, you know, once you play Hog Gold Soul Silver, there's a proper post-game story going on. Um, but, yeah, in, in the, in the original version, it's just you go there and you get to do your 8 gym challenge again. And this time you've kind of got, you know, the ability to go anywhere, which is very neat. So, there's four trainers chilling outside, and yo, trainers, whether you're hot to trot or cool cat not, wow, 2003 was a wild time. Chill at my papa's spot. As far as I know, they implemented, uh, they implemented what they wanted, but not the way they wanted. Uh, like the forest just being the sad little tree maze instead of the old forest. That is true. Boring battles aren't worth the effort. Fiery hot battles are what toughen up trainers and Pokemon. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Johan with the gold. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel that though, yeah. Um, like there weren't any interior places in the, uh, the Kanto region in that game. And to be honest, uh, with, uh, like, um, you know, Leaf Green and Fire Red doing the, uh, the Sevi Islands. That's one where it's like, yeah, sometimes it's like they go back and they just have more ideas of how to expand upon it. A lot of games do this, where they've got, um, a remake that just does expand upon the, uh, the original game a bit more. Even if it's as subtle as something like the, um, the, uh, uh, like the Dragon Quest remakes. Where it's, uh, you know, they just tweak some numbers here and there, and uh, maybe there's some, like, extra things for you to do. You got this nonogram. You got this, my man. But yeah, like, yeah, Leaf Green is rather interesting for me. It was a real interesting one, because it's like, I'm playing a game that I had already played. Um, and I guess, yeah, because I didn't play, you know, I wasn't really around when Red and Blue came out, but I played them before the next game came out. So I was a bit of a late straggler, and then 
There's a leaf green fire red, probably about like six, five years after I had played this game for the first time. It was a very quick remake, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But I guess we'll get to that when I get to that. Oh gosh, we're actually getting to the point. We've gone to the point where I've done my Let's Play longer, like longer ago than 10 years. That, that's, that's pushing upon 10 years now. I'm feeling old already. Speaking of feeling old, uh, five to six years, it has been five to six years since the last Legend of Zelda game. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a... Uh, let's just say it's one of those string of games where everyone loves it until the next best game of all time comes out, then people look back on it and go, eh, well, it's okay. Um, I'm personally of the opinion, I really did like it. I really did enjoy it, and I think I've never felt ways about an open world game that that game got me to do. Um, which I think is probably the best strength, and that's why it wholeheartedly deserves a recommendation. Is it the greatest game of all time? I will, you know, I will always hesitate to say that if Metro Prime is eternally in that spot for me. <laughs> um, but... Like, you know what I mean? It's like, games don't have to be the best of all time. They just have to be really strong recommendations. And then, uh, like, I think Breath of the Wild is one where pretty much anyone can enjoy it. Um, and especially as well, if you feel like open world games are tired, this game is, you know, the best thing that you could potentially play. It, it gives you a whole new perspective to open world games. Um... Look at this dude. You're looking for a battle on the high seas. You can't you can't do you can't say high seas and not do a pirate accent. You'll find no hotter trainer than me, matey. What's what I guess everyone inside the, the hot shack is talking about being hot. That makes sense. Dwayne! <laughs> He's still got the wing girls. That's gonna be really irritating because they all I'm instinctively going right all the time. I hope you realize that. I'm going right to the bag every time. I wanna switch out. And they move those menu options in every game. It's going to be different in Diamond and Pearl. It's just going to throw me off, I swear. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so Breath of the Wild, it's a game. It came out uh, for the Switch's release and was probably delayed a fair bit in anticipation of the Switch. Um, so I want to really note, this may have been... Did he, was he saying sending out Tentacle? Oh, dang it. I want to send a... I think it up. I'm still sending out Ninkida, I don't care. Get- Oh dang it, I went right again. Um... But yeah, like, that game came out... When did the Switch come out? March 2017. 2017 was ages ago. What did we have to worry about in 2017? That's right. Um... I don't know <laughs> what we were watching out for. I was like, no... There wasn't any, like... You know... Oh, maybe there was a deadly disease. We might have we might have been on a baller at that point. Still, so. point is, Breath of the Wild blew my mind. Uh, then you have the swap prompt after beating a punk. I did. I just wasn't looking. <laughs> I was not looking at that occasion. I knew he had a tentacle. So, and that tentacle was toast. That's all the trainers, by the way, so if, if you're wondering, like, why I'm just starting the stream and just, like, talking about stuff, I'm just like, they're just gonna be fighting Pokemon. Some of those Pokemon Blue videos were, like, absolute slogs, I'll tell you that, because I did not want to cut out any gameplay. So anyway, if you defeat all three of these dudes, you get a half dozen bottles of Sodi Pop. What an amazing deal. And you can buy some for $300 a bottle. How much do they heal? I think they're... 60? I think they're 60, I got the tab open. They are indeed 60. Fun fact, apparently Gen 7 onwards, they're 50 again. Again, that implies they were. Yeah, it's the, it's the Soda Pop, 50, 60, and 80. Soda Pop, the fresh water's 50, and then it's uh, Lemonade, isn't it? That's the 80. So anyway, here we are, Slateport City. There's a few things going on right now, particularly you want to try and get into the museum. Uh, Team Aqua is apparently hogging the line. Stern, the fellow who built the museum, also happens to be the leader of an undersea exploration team. So everyone calls him Captain Stern. That, that makes sense, I guess. What is that over there? That long line? It's, it's just a long line. I can stand here. 
Why are we even lining up and paying? We should just march in. Let's check out the mall while we're at it. The market does have some interesting merchandise, but there are some items you can only get at a Pokemon. Oh. The Great Ball is better than the Pokeball catching Pokemon with this, so I should be able to get that elusive Pokemon. They were the secret cheap hills, uh, cheap hills, but they were only available in that one place, weren't they? On on top of a uh, Celadon. Listen, I gotta get some more Premier Balls, I'll tell you that. And yeah, one at a time. Good thing, I think you only had to ever buy one of the fresh waters and then every single guard around the entire game just shared it. This is the Pokemon Contest Hyper Rank Registration. Now, I'll get into that mechanic in a bit, but we got the Name Raider, so if you want to rename your Pokemon... Uh, so if you think I have a terrible name, now's the chance. You can go up to this guy and he can fortune tell your name. Great. I always feel like that's a translation thing. Uh, swap each one for the TMs, uh, for the Beam, uh, uh, Ice Beam. Oh, yeah, yeah, And here's the Pokemon Fan Club. If I'm, I'm the chairman of the Pokemon Fan Club, being the chairman, I am naturally the most important. No one could best me when it comes to raising Pokemon. No one! In any contest, my victory is a foregone conclusion. But that would deprive others of their enjoyment. So I now while away my time examining the Pokemon of others. It is marvelous to witness how others have raised Pokemon. There's a lot of others in there. The contented faces of properly raised Pokemon. The kind and loving gazes of their trainers. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunder, that's yeah, so good. My heart is overwhelmed, there's so much happiness. Oh my, excuse me, I seem to have netted on far too long. Please allow me to examine your Pokemon, see how it's grown. Mm, I see, uh, it's not bad, it's not good either. You as a trainer must put more effort into raising this Pokemon. For instance, may I suggest that you give it more Pokey blocks? What an interesting thing for him to say. Give him the gains right there. Uh, so, treat him with love. So I believe this guy gives you... Does he give you... I think he gives you scarfs if you have maximum of the, the, the contest ranks, I believe. Oh, wait, was that the reporter? Should I have said hi to the reporter there? She would have given me an interview? Wow, it's plain to see that you lavish your love on Ninkita. Okay, it's named Nonogram. Can I ask you a favor? I'm a TV reporter. I'm running a survey in Pokemon. Would you be willing to answer a few simple questions with me? Real life, never do this. <laughs> they, they don't, they, they are working for your attention. Don't give it to them. <laughs> what was about Ninkita that attracted you? Um, oh gosh. Uh, I get one word, don't I? Ah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say feelings, I'm gonna say, uh, <laughs> go home, go home, please. Oh, that makes sense, the next question might be a little on the top side, here it goes. What did Pokemon mean to you? Um, don't we have a... Uh... What did Pokemon mean to you? Um, oh, do we have others? Ah! <laughs> Lots of fun things to put on this. Uh, eh? <laughs> eh? I see. <laughs> okay, thanks for helping me out. It's fun and enlightening chatting with you. It's possible an interview will end up on TV. So yeah, occasionally you can find this interview on TV, which is hilarious. And bonus points, if you trade with someone or you share records or something, they might get that interview. It's kind of fun. Any Pokemon you get in the trade, you can't change its nickname. The original trainer's love for that Pokemon is in the nickname. Aww. So anyway, here we got the market. We have, uh... Oh, I, gotta, I gotta apparently get the secret power. Secret power is an incredibly important move. So vital in this game. This guy's telling me about seaweed. Wow. He's the energy guru. Okay, here we go. Energy items, that's right. These are just the good old stat raising items. You give it to your Pokemon and it increases their effort values. Um, which is a very hidden underlying number. Uh, but they're very useful, but they're also always very expensive. You have to go for a little harder. Uh, I think this person gives an effort ribbon if they're like max EVs or something. Welcome, how may I serve you? This person sells some dolls. What are the dolls for? I guess we'll get there in a bit, so. Will you give me the secret power? Who even gives you the secret power? I don't think anyone here gives you the secret power, do they? I 
I don't even know. I don't think you get secret power here. I think you get it a bit later. I was thinking, it's, like, eh, it's a bit soon to be getting secret power. Look at this lighthouse. Just a little dinky. It looks like a pawn. Like, I'm not saying... Hopefully the subtitles catch me on this. The chess piece. The pawn. The P-A-W-N. Not... Australian accents, man. That's gonna get... That's Some people are gonna hear that and go, oh. The light of the lighthouse reaches dozens of miles away. Dozens, I tell you. That's actually pretty far when you think about it. Because the, the world is only like 50 miles diameter. The chess piece from which... Uh, that's... Yeah, that's the word that I was not... I was... I, I was saying the other one. Like, the one that moves forward only. You need a contest pass to enter a concert. They give it to anyone who has a Pokemon? That seems like a really easy condition. Look at this building that's just... Inaccessible. We can go in the shipyard as well. Lots of stuff going on here, man. Uh, if this goes here and that goes over there, then where does this thing go? What about that doohickey? Oh, come and get to tell to this. I am Doc. Captain Stern commissioned me to design a ferry. Oh, that there. Are they Devon goods? Hmm, this one do. Captain Stern went off somewhere. He said he had some work to do. Can I get you to go find Captain Stern to deliver that to him? Oh, okay. I like this, uh, hole through the floor. It's just fun. It reminds me of that Harry Potter game I played recently, doesn't it? Except it's a bit more obvious. Oh, buoyancy. Oh my gosh, don't you dare throw signs at me. I'll have you know the ship floats purely by willpower. You see, the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians built boats, and they did it because they believed it would float. And since then, we have continued their belief of things floating. That is how things float. QED. I'm glad, as someone who's seasick, you're working on boats. Well, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> and you have structural pillars holding up the ceiling in the hole, so they make the- Exactly! Exactly. What is a bathtub? <laughs> oh, look at that! The museum's empty. Cool. Welcome to the Oceanic Museum. Wow! 50 bucks! Hi there. Eh, ah, what are you doing there? Yeah, I'm the Team Aqua member you thumped before, remember? Here, take this, you have to forgive me. Oh. Check it out. <laughs> oh, Donnie, you, you so screwed up our plans. I was gonna rip off something to make up for it, but uh, just you wait, you'll get yours one day. You know. That is uh, the TM for Thief, which is a fun attack. <laughs> I didn't have 50 bucks, bro. You could have robbed one of the kids outside. Ooh, it's also simple here. Look at all these people appreciating art and history. If I ripped off the stuff here, would it make me rich? Not really. Strange machine is rotating under a glass dome. Maybe it's from measuring the depth of something. Maybe. They're just learning. They're just learning their history. This looks like a rather important place to be standing, by the way, so I'm gonna save just in case. Wow, that was a kind of long sa save, wasn't it? Yes, if you're looking for Stern, that would be me. Ah, that must be the part I ordered from Mr. Stone. Stern and Stone. Should have been Mr. Starbird. Thank you, that's great. We can prepare for our expedition now. Eh, 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 hold it, we'll take those parts. What? Who are you people? We're Team Aqua. They don't know about you. A boss wants these parts. Shut your yap and fork him over. Oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're fighting some more, more Team Aqua fellas. They're chillin'. They got Kavana, which is actually one of the cruelest Pokemon in the whole game. Uh, so cruel that I might actually sand attack him a couple of times. Carvana's really annoying because he has an ability called Rough Skin, where any physical attack you hit him with, he's gonna just, you just take damage back. Also, he's really strong. Anyways, uh, this is the first real contact. Um, yes, yes, they kind of appeared and then they were like, yeah, no, we're, we're gone, see ya. There you go. That sand attack should help, but yeah, I'm gonna take a hit. You see, I just take damage all of a sudden. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that that hurt really, really hurts. 
there's a lot of real annoying abilities in every game. And I feel like this one is like, you know, it starts off and then it's like, oh boy. This is just gonna be the handful of really annoying ones. One gripe with Gen 3 nowadays is that physical and special attacks are still tied to type. That is true. That is true. And that, I mean, uh, this is the game that introduced, uh, them as in physical and special, oh, like abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all goes downhill. It's just finding the one from the Spore Pokemon, not sure the English name. Uh, like Oddish? Or Shroomish? Where he just, like, paralyzes you all of a sudden. Um, I would love to fight this, uh, guy, but he probably knows Wing Attack as well, which would ruin my day. It's just a zoo bad. it's not gonna be too bad. Yeah, 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 Shroomish has that. What an astonishing attack. Time to hit him with a water gun. I don't exactly have to hit him with a water gun, because I got higher physical attack. Like, oh, I'm gonna use, uh, Tackle, and it's probably gonna kill him. Yeah. Your physical attacks are a bit too good on, uh, on him. Oh, he's got another Carvana. I got this, bro. I got this. What could possibly go wrong? I could, in theory, use Water Gun, which I probably will use now. Always focusing. Yeah, I do wish my, my Ninkada was a bit more evenly leveled, but you know what? He evolves at level 20, which is probably going to happen this stream. And look at that level go up. Nice. What? I lost two. Wow, he had so much money, he could have given his mate the money to get in. Now what? If we don't get the parts, we're in for it. Ah, uh, I didn't count on being meddled by some... <laughs> with, with by some meddling kid. Oh my gosh, sentence. I came to see what was taking so long to snatch some parts. And you simps? Man, this game was ahead of its time, wasn't it? <laughs> gosh, they're simping for May, aren't they? Gosh, your, your simps are held up by a mere child. I am Team Aqua's Archie. Tell me, why do you meddle in the noble affairs of Team Aqua? Pokemon, people, all life depends on the sea. So Team Aqua is dedicated to the expansion of the sea. Don't you agree? What we are doing is a magnificent undertaking. Ah, fine, you're still too young. It can't be helped that you do not understand our ideals. But if you ever oppose us again, there will be consequences. Heed my warning. Farewell. Psh. You're... Ah, okay, you're being now. Anyway, that was a tense situation. Thank you for saving us. Oh yes, I almost forgot that you even brought the parts from Devon. Yeah, like the like the the ham. <laughs> Whoops! There's no time to lose. We have to set on our uh, out on our ocean floor expedition real soon. Thanks and excuse me. <laughs> and he's gone. Thank you, Archie from Team Aqua. Wow. Turns out, once you remove the terrorists, there's no one in the museum anymore. But you got two receptionists, so that's alright. Is this guy gonna comment on that line? Oh no, he's just, he's just still there. Are you gonna comment on the lack of the line? When I was a child, I visited the museum often. I used to dream about the mysteries of the sea after seeing the exhibits. Jeez, I've never seen the water before. The ocean's actually kind of cool, because... You do have so much uh, depth to it. I guess that's kind of in the name, but... But anyway, uh, that was, uh... That was pretty much all we had to do in Slateport City. Oh, and there's the contest place, which I might as well just look at. But kind of annoyingly, the way the concert hall works is, uh... You have to go to the normal ranked contest hall in Verdenturf Town. And kind of annoyingly, it's a huge surprise coming from the previous games. Yeah, the contests are real cool. I, I do, like, if anything, it's like a super cool mechanic. Uh, and this person gives you the Pokeball case. Oh, the underwater part was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, because it's on top of that, like, and if anything, I guess that's a nice segue back to Zelda. Um, but yeah, we got a Pokeblock case, and what this actually lets you do is that you can go up to this machine, and, uh, or, or this machine if you want it. This machine? Oh my gosh, that's a link with your friends one. If you win a contest, I'll put up a poster of your Pokemon on the wall. Um, I might as well show off this mechanic now while we're at it. Um, do the minigame. So, do you know how to make it? No, let's say no. Okay, so, how does this works? When the blender's arrow comes to your mark, you press the A button, and that's all you really have to do. How this mechanic works is that every person who's standing at the machine has to throw in a berry. Each of these berries, you'll be able to check their tag, and you'll see that they have, you know, like, 
they have a certain condition on them. Like, you know, this is spicy, this is uh, dry, this is uh, sweet. Uh, each of these corresponds to a appropriate uh, contest category. So spicy lines up with coolness. Beauty lines up with, or dry uh, goes with beauty. Uh, cuteness is sweet, I believe cleverness is bitter, and uh, toughness is sour. Uh, if you don't know which one's which, you can also kind of go, I think they color code. Um, I think I know the bug. Remind me of the bug. Um, but yeah, if you're ever confused, the first five berries are always like, you know, just straight that one stat, and they're also colored the exact same, so that's cool. Uh, at some point, berries stop to grow. Oh my gosh. Uh, some of these also kind of tick multiple stats, so like that, and the orange berry is kind of a nice, just, you know, does all of them. Let's uh, throw in an orange berry. Um, now, everyone is going to be throwing in their own berries, and that kind of, you know, messes everything up. You want to hit A once it's on your pointer. And like every good old GBA game... Oop, I botched it up. We got that rotating. Do I... I, I am continually not missing, but I'm not getting the... There you go. Well, I got two at the end. Look at that, I'm perfect right there. So, uh, <laughs> really all that matters is that each, uh, it is the bike music, yes. Um, what this does is that, yeah, depending on how well you do, you get a Pokeblock that's a certain color, uh, and it's got a level and a feel, which is basically how strong that Pokeblock is. Uh, you can then go into your Pokeblock case, find that Pokeblock. Uh, so even though it said it was, uh, Indigo, that's because it is both dry and bitter. You can then toss, or you can, sorry, you can toss it if you want to ditch it, but you can also throw it onto a certain Pokemon. So how about let's throw it onto, uh, you know, Carrot right here. You then just yeet the block at him. Yeets it. And what happens is, oh, whoa, some of the stats go up. At some point, uh... He'll be max stat. There's a, you know, there's a number behind it. You can't feed him infinitely too much, but you could probably max out some stats. Um, we can't get into the contest just now, but getting into the Poke Box is at least something. Uh, finally, there is a ship dock. I beg your pardon? You're looking for a ship? Uh, there's no ship. <laughs> Journey to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Strap on some concrete blocks. Uh, your Pokemon has collected trash? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, wait, sorry, as in, yeah, sorry, uh, <laughs> I just want to mention the pickup ability. Suddenly, you're right, Zigzagoon has an item. He has a super potion. I, I mention that every time you got a Pokemon with pickup, keep checking that he's got an item, because he'll magically be holding onto an item every so often. So, that's cool. Um... Yeah, it's kind of weird that, like, you can't take, um, the contest just yet. Uh, if you're playing Emerald, that's not even a concert hall there. That's actually, um, like a, a place where you battle trainers. Um, get the, had the item since the beginning of the stream. Ah! I've been lacking some, some walking steps. I think it, I'm not too sure how often it, uh, rolls for items. I wanted to say it's every, like, 10, 24, um, steps, but, yeah. Here we go, here's a Pokemon that might be, uh, defeatable. There's a Plusle. Uh, Plusle is uh, one of those, they have quite a few of these, they have kind of like pair Pokemons in this game, where basically there's two Pokemon that kind of form a nice little pair. Um, not just like a, oh, someone's in one version, someone's in the other kind of thing. It's like both Plusle and the equivalent Minin, uh, both available. You have berries. You have an orange berry. That's actually not that bad. I'm getting growled so much, I'm just kind of expecting a crit at some point. This is abysmally slow, isn't it? Gosh, how many times are you gonna growl me? Jeez. I like how Emerald introduced lots more optional dual battles. Yes, because we're playing the game, count the number of double battles I do, and the answer is, uh, I'm, it's probably like six or seven. It's, there's a legitimately low amount of double battles in this game, despite introducing it. But hey, if you think that mechanic is wasted, just remember, triple battles in 5th gen. 
And yeah, 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 you could fight one after the other. Okay, we're switching over to Kipperoni, who's also ground type. How convenient. Man, I was expecting, I was expecting to be able to, to kick this bustle's butt a bit more with a, with a dude. I'm gonna do the, the classic strat of send him out and send him back, because Kipperoni's getting way too much experience. And Nonogram is just, he's still struggling. He's eternally just not, not at it. I'm not having a fun time with him. I'll probably, I think I'm looking at, like, the list of Pokemon I'm gonna get, and I'm probably gonna pick up at least one this stream. At least one. So, plus or minus, they don't actually, they don't evolve into each other, they just kind of sit on their own. Do you intend to go for the secret Pokemon for his evolution? Um, at this rate, probably. I mean, as long as I don't, you know, bonk my party, sure, but, um, which, which one will I use, you'll have to see. I think the general aim for my party is gonna be like a fun, um, you know, kind of like, there's gonna be some weird plays here and there. Uh, he's trying to learn Foresight, that's, no, we're not learning Foresight. Foresight is just not a useful move. I just, I've never found good value out of it. So, I could technically use the, the Viz Seeker to refight trainers, um, soon, right? When do you get that? You get that real soon, don't you? I remembered in my head mid-sentence that I don't have the item. Since you don't remember the trainers and their Pokemon and which attacks they have, I bet you'll use the non-secret one. Oh, well, it's... Okay, to be honest, it's a bit sadistic if you go with the secret one. It is super sadistic if you go with the secret one. It's like, you have to really know what you're doing if you want to rock that one for the actual game. Uh, I'm gonna go left here. This is Route 116, which you might remember. Uh, did you feel the tug of our soul-soothing fragrance? Uh... Excuse me? Oh my gosh, Roselia! I love Roselia! Wait, no I don't. <laughs> so Roselia is a fun grass type, but uh, that's gonna be a bit oof, because uh, hey, I've got two Pokemon that are kind of vulnerable to grass type. So we're gonna hope that I can clear this one real quick with Mudshot. Get him out of there. Oh, uh, lowered the speed. That actually might be... Oh, I didn't mean to lower the speed. And it's gone up anyways. Oh no, that's special attack. Sorry, my bad. No! Dang it. Double dang it. Oh well. So anyway, um, so Zelda. Uh, point is, uh, there's a new Zelda. It came out... Uh, Friday here, so a couple of days ago. I have not played it. I will probably be playing it soonish. Um, but I wanted to kind of mention that, yeah, Breath of the Wild was one of those games where it was the greatest game of all time until. Oh my goodness. I'm Amy, and this is my little sister Liv. We battled together. We did it. Count it. Double battle number two. We have another double battle, finally. Look at that, we got plus on mine and chillin'. And I've got carrot. Sure, we'll use carrot. Um, so what are we gonna do? I guess I could use nightshade, can't I? Yeah, sure, we'll use nightshade. They have this ability called Helping Hand. It's got it's a high priority move, and it basically throws the other Pokemon's stats onto uh, the one that's doing the attack, which is really good if uh, you know you have a super strong Pokemon and you want to kind of like you know co-opt a move set with the stats. Uh, it does not make sense to use, um, Thunder Wave with that, because Thunder Wave is gonna do what Thunder Wave does. And that's just a quick attack, so... It's a fun fact about a double battle, if you hit, uh... Well, when it's, when it's your turn. Um, but you can see that, uh, the health bars are a little bit smushed. Uh, so you can't see the experience of your Pokémon, like, you just leveled up all of a sudden. And he's trying to learn Fury Swipes. Everyone's amazing move. Do I actually have Fury Swipes? No, Fury... Well, Fury Swipe is, is uh... Not my go-to attack, but I I don't think any of these are particularly my go-to. So how about we'll, we'll 
do it instead of maybe instead of Harden. The PP is gonna throw me off, but I'm not I'm not gonna wing Harden forever. Harden's not gonna be in my moveset, set, so we'll be fine there. Uh, but yeah, while you're on the screen, if you hit a uh, SART, it swaps the numbers with uh, the actual numbers instead of a bar. I don't know how easy is it to see. I think the health bar makes a little more sense there. But if you know what you're looking for, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a fun thing. That just you can swap the the thing for. Uh, you press a start. Was yeah, it was start just then. Only when it's your turn, uh, but it works uh, in... Sorry. It's, whoops. Don't, don't switch on the screen. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's a very cool thing. It's just kind of there. It's not getting that, that Fury Swipes action, though. Um, but yeah, Sand Attack is a good meme move. You might as well use it. Don't need Harden, especially not for Ninkado. He's not that he's not that bulky anyways. Uh-oh, we lost. Oh my goodness, there's trainers everywhere here. My Pokemon is delightfully adorable. Don't be shy, I'll show, I'll show you. Oh my god. Um, so I wanted to mention that with uh, the new Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, uh, it first... It had... Let's say, it had a leak. Nintendo's servers are not, uh, the Ghost Dark type combo is amazing until much later generations. Oh, exactly. Like, Gen 6, that's ages away. Good old Attract, by the way. I'm glad, I'm glad I've been fallen into the Attract life. Who's the real simp? I'm not getting anywhere, am I? Oh, no, I got there. Alright, okay, we got a crit, so... Fury Swipes is a good meme of a move if uh, if it works out for you. But you know what? The odds are a little better than Scratch, so... I'm worried I'm gonna get one hit. We'll see how it goes. Oh, at this point, I'm done. I'm done. He's, he's been dropped to his defense, he's attracted, he's asleep. Nonogram is not getting anywhere. He is not going anywhere. Uh, let's go with Carrot. He's probably he's probably got nothing to attack with. Can't use attract on me. Well, that's okay. This nightshade hit. Like I know it's ghost type, but I'm just curious because I saw someone mention, um, not related to my stream, but they mentioned they used nightshade on Brawly's Pokemon. I was like, does that actually work? No, it's why? Why were they saying that? And with that, with that, uh, um, <laughs> with that move done, thanks for the follow, uh, Mr. Double L Yazin. How you doing? But yeah, no, Tears of the Kingdom. It got leaked because Nintendo doesn't keep their servers under wrap. You can kind of just invoke their servers and download a game ahead of time. Why would people do that? Just going, oh, exactly, yeah. Lots of, lots of, lots of statements on the internet uh, about the new Zelda, I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it leaked, so a lot of people were kind of getting their opinions well before the reviewers were, were putting theirs out, and then bonus points. Um, you know, they uh, I don't think the reviewers actually spent as much time as maybe some of the people who were playing the leak by the end of the day. It's like, eh, I mean, the leak is kind of... You know, they covered everything, really. Um, but I'll definitely say as well that, like, you know, when you don't pay money for a game, and, and this one's gonna be like the whole me with my snooty nose, I don't believe it's morally right to really play a leaked game. I don't think it's really, like, the greatest opportunity. Like, you know, the game's not out yet. I'll, I'll, I will personally respect that, and I'll personally try and stay out of, um, you know, like, just seeking it, I guess. I'm not gonna snitch, but uh, I'm not seeking seeking the leaks like that. Um, I'm also of the opinion as well that, like, yeah, you know, you don't really have to play the game day one anyway, so, like, playing it day negative 15 is kind of, you know, <laughs> really jumping the gun. Uh, the first thing... Have you ever seen the first thing that came up with? The first thing that came up with? You're gonna have to elaborate on that. <laughs> um, but... Uh, 
But yeah, the general sentiment that I got from the new Zelda before the reviews and all that stuff came out was people said it was more Breath of the Wild, um, so much so that it does share the same map. It's got more going on, but since it does share the same map, you're definitely going to feel that you've maybe missed a bit of the mystery now. Um, uh, you are the best you. I know you are. Best, best you. Unless that's a lie on the internet, in which case, oh, I got got. I've been had. I've, I'm, I'm destroyed. Look at this fisherman. He's just got magic up. Saying it shares, uh, it shares the same app is like saying Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Silver share the same app. Well, I, I think, I think the um, the appropriate analogy is Far Cry Primal because that copy-pasted the same map from Far Cry 4, but what they did was they, you know, it doesn't have buildings, it's being toyed around with. Um, but I do kind of agree. You have much more. Well, there is much more in, um, I'm in the process. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver definitely has much more than the old map. Um, Dragon Quest 2 is kind of like that as well, where it's like the, a whole section of the game is the first game. <laughs> If you cross the sea from here, it'll be a shortcut to Oldale Town. Foo 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 foo. Foo 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 foo. Okay. Uh, look at these trees. Get Zigzagoon to chop them down. Yeah, I, I. Yeah, oh, true. The underground and the sky definitely expand upon a lot more. So I will, I will definitely say there are more things to look at that are not the exact same locations as the last game. If it was purely locations from the last game, I think a lot of people would be thrown off. Um, I'll try to keep the spoilers to a very, very minimum as well, because I, like, one, I haven't played it, and two, I don't really know a lot as well, so I'm not even going to say too much. Uh, HM2FIL. Which one's... Oh, that's Fly. Fly's not until a fair bit later, though, but... Oh, that'll be good once I get that. Uh, do I need a heal? Yeah, should be fine. Let's head into here, everyone's favorite part of the game. The Trick Room. It's got that wonderful music. You had to just spot that this bit just flashed. You press A on it. Ha! Grr, how did you know I concealed myself beneath this desk? You're sharp. And then this guy just goes, Behold, for I am the greatest living mystery of mother man in all of Hoenn. They call me the Trick Master. Wahahaha, <laughs> glad to meet you. You, you've come to challenge my trick house, haven't you? That's why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Consider your challenge accepted. Enter through the scroll there and let your challenge commence. I shall be waiting in the back. Woo! And he's gone from existence. You can go in through the hole. The Trick Room is a... Uh set of challenges, basically? There's eight challenges available at different points in the game. Not exactly after each gym, but you can do two of them. <laughs> um, you, yeah, you can do two of them right now, so it's it's fun. It's cool. I think, yeah, you need... Uh, um, actually, can you do the second one now? Pretty sure you can. Oh, no, you can't. You can't do the second one now. That's after the third gym. Okay, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one after each gym after that one, and then one after beating the whole game, so come back here and you keep doing more and more of these challenges. Uh, but yeah, oh, it's definitely good, because you get a bunch of, like, very even, evenly leveled Pokemon, I guess, to fight. Not evenly leveled, but, like, there's a bunch of trainers that you can fight that will definitely be worthwhile in fighting. And he's poisoned me, so I'm a little screwed, so... You can leave the trick room. You don't have to, you know, beat him one go, but yeah. Themska. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, New Zelda... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of the same map. Um, the other thing I saw was that the new mechanics were hit and miss. If you really like them, that's great. You're gonna really enjoy the game. But you might find that if they're not your cup of tea, it's just gonna absolutely, you know not be a fun experience. Um, and uh, also on top of that, if you felt a little, you know, done with Breath of the Wild, yeah, you're really gonna feel the fatigue on this one. That's the sentiment I got. Um, so a lot of people were predicting the journalists are gonna eat this one up. Game comes out, 
the journalist ate it up. It's got a 97 on Open Critic right now. And I only started doing uh, them in my first playthrough a bit later. Train up an Aaron into a Laron into an Aggron. Oh, it's definitely great for that kind of leveling, isn't it? Look at that, he took out that Oddish all by himself. You know, I'm actually curious if you like, if you come at me with uh, like the non-English name, I'm curious if I'll actually get it because there's going to be some Pokemon where it's like, I actually, like the name makes sense outside of English as well. Will I live or will I die? Gosh, getting poisoned all the time, I swear. Mew. Good old Mew. Mewto. If that's the name of Aaron in your language, then, yeah, okay, I'd get confused. I'm like, how do you have a Mewtwo? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, anyway, the critics absolutely love Tears of the Kingdom. Um, and, uh, I guess we get into this whole bit of, uh, Glumanda, Glutexo, Glurak. Glurak. Nah, I don't think I would have gotten it. You are doing? You are you doing? I am. Can you guess which one? Uh, Glurak. Glumanda. Well, there's three of them, because they all start with glue. Glurak me reminded me of Spinarak. Um. Glurak. Glumanda. Uh. Stolunia, Stolrak, Stolos. Um. I'm gonna say Glurak is like. What, what would I say it is? Slack off. I'm going with slack off. What's the slack off slack, uh, bigger off slacking? Charmant. Oh, you know, like, okay, real talk. I know it's like a, a cop out to say, oh, that was my second guess. But like, legit, when you say Glumanda, I was thinking Salamander. What's a Salamander Pokemon? Charmander, right? But then I was thinking, nah, because you were talking about like third gen, weren't you? And then oh, I went with I went with the wrong one. I don't know what's going on with Glutexo though. Did I get one? Oh my gosh, I, I got infatuated immediately. And I've been sung. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Anyways, Zelda, it's a it's a game. The critics love it. And, uh, I want to note one hilarious thing was Kotaku, which is, uh, everyone's favorite piece of, uh, you know, ju journalistic integrity. Um, listen, Kotaku, you can, you can hire me, I will write hilarious columns for you. Um, but, uh, legit, I, have they been blacklisted by Nintendo? I'm not too sure what they did before. But yeah, they were like, oh, we're gonna counter the blacklist by just, not counter, we're gonna protest against the blacklist by just posting about the leaks. They're not exactly leaking the material, but when they report that people have leaked certain things, you know, oh, like, you're not posting the leaks themselves, but you are amplifying it so hard. You know, unlike Polygon leaking the Fallout 4 script, for example. Which isn't that fun as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, then, um... I assume they didn't have a review copy, and therefore couldn't review the game. Uh, and then... I'm not too sure which uh, publication it was, but there was one singular publication that gave the game a 6 out of 10. They were a lot more scathing, um, and yeah, they generally said in the end, it's like, oh, you know, the game is fine, but it just wasn't their cup of tea. And I get that, and I actually think that, you know, there's gonna be some people out there who are like, a little too defensive of Nintendo. I get that. That's gonna be the case. Sure. Everything has its fanboys. Um, but like, you know, it's a journalist's opinion. It's like, take it with a pinch of salt because sometimes journalists... Often journalists are very, very wrong on things. Or, they're just writing their opinion. And legit, none of them actually really know what good game design is or speak really to you as a, as a person. Find the one journalist who actually speaks to you as a person, rather than just looking at it as a wall of numbers under various publications that you might have recognized for some astute journalism from 25 years ago. Like, you know what I mean? 
It's like IGN... You no, know, like, I remember IGN from, you know, decades ago. It doesn't necessarily mean that everyone working there now shares my opinions and gives me valid, uh... Not v well, valid in the sense of, like, it resonates with me. It's more just like, eh... Sometimes it's, it's, it just doesn't ring true. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. Still getting leech line, dang it. So, point is, uh, some journal, journal, uh, some publication gave it a 6 out of 10, and a Kotaku article comes out, it's good that someone gave Bre uh, Tears of the Kingdom a 6 out of 10. Like, uh, excuse me, I'm pretty sure, does Kotaku give numbers? I'm pretty sure Kotaku got rid of numbers. Yeah, Kotaku got rid of their own numbers years ago because they which to be honest i actually kind of agree with take the stand of describing how much you actually like and recommend the game um yeah at the end of the day i think people are still enjoying it um i don't know like i do feel like it's gonna be that kind of game that's uh why am i not using that shade <laughs> um yeah okay everyone play the leaks yeah um i'm definitely seeing some clips of people doing wacky stuff with the fusion mechanic. What's the fusion one? What's the one where, like, you, you, you join objects? What oh, is the fusion mechanic one. Yes, less playtime than some of the legit players. To be honest, though, as well, like, I feel like there's some people, it's Breath of the Wild and steroids. Which is kind of, you know, isn't that a good thing? And kind of what people did want in the end. Man, there's three trainers here. I'm just going to have to go back and heal up again. Dang it. Like, okay, I know I, I know some people are like, oh, it's been six years and I expected more, and some people are also like, the Switch wasn't powerful enough for the original Breath of the Wild, to which I would then say, actually, Breath of the Wild did have some kind of weird optimizations because it also had to be for the Wii U. They they had some Wii U stuff in there, then Breath of the Wild comes, oh, sorry, you know, game's done, training wheels off. We're going in for a Switch version, and they're able to pull a bit more, bit more visually. I do, I do see that. Although, you know, not enough to look like a PS5 game. Definitely. Um, I'm still looking forward to whenever Nintendo refresh their hardware um, for the Switch. We are, we only speak in like, you know, the sentiment. I don't think anyone's got any clue of when there's going to be a, a next Switch console, but yeah. Originally, until later on Breath of the Wild, it had better performance than the Switch. For oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, when people were playing the game leaked, obviously, the Switch was a new console, the Wii U had emulators, so people emulated the Wii U version, and that's where a lot of the best-looking footage from 20 uh, 2017 was. It was the Wii U version. I don't know where there are a lot of people to get the Wii U version. Like even me, even me, my my proud Wii U owner, and I'm like, eh, I didn't really, I didn't really consider it. I went into this weird house by accident. That is a creepy thing for a kid to, like, be okay with. <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> what are you doing, Eddie? All right, we're gonna sweep the zigzagoon. It's gonna be wicked. Hey, it's Japan. Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> Listen, it's got two zigzagoons. I love me a zigzagoon. DK, unless you said bye, in which case... Okay, watch the end of Evangelion yesterday. It all returned to nothing. Something, something. Tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. So not bye. It is not the, the goodbye. Three friends uh, with whom I did the Evangelion Marathon on Easter. Oh, that's nice. Did you watch episodes 25 and 26, or did you just kind of go straight for end of Evangelion? I'm always curious, because, like, I talked to mates. You did You did go for... Okay, so you got to see both endings. 25 26 isn't actually, like, that bad, but it is, like... Yeah, like... You know... Uh, we do expect something grandiose, so... Sure. I, I wholly accept episode 25 and 26 are not, like, I'm just going to be in a flinch storm, aren't I? But yeah, End of Evangelion's great, although a bit, uh, a bit on the, uh, a wholly abstract and kind of like, oh, and then they all die kind of approach, but sure. 25 26 is basically what happens in the end of Eva, just not anime and uh, decides differently. True, yeah, exactly. Right. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. That's that's it. Man. Hologram's not having a fun time. We're going back to the kippers. See ya, Yazin. I do like End of Evangelion. I don't know too much anime, but I know that one. I think one thing that makes, uh... Oh, the memes, the memes are good. The memes are so good. I think the one doing the round right now that I can see is uh, when you want to watch blue, but your girlfriend wants to watch orange. All those, look how I got a hot milk by being an unsupervised by means. Oh, exactly. There's a lot of people who, who like, pull the whole, like, Misato's, like, the best girl, Asuka's the best girl, and I'm just sitting there going, you know, like, if we're treating this as a character study, there's something, uh, there's some kind of, uh, you know, psychological manifestation in each of these characters that relates to Shinji's development as a, as a, as a person. There's a reason why Asuka is the one at the end. Trickmaster is fabulous. So, for reference, the scroll you get, there's gonna be a scroll in each of the mazes. Talk to the scroll, go to the end, and then the guy is just like, Oh! You made it to me! Oh, you're sharp! It took me all night to plant all those fruits. You're almost my equal in greatness by one, two, three, four, five, six places! Fine, you have earned this reward! And gives you a prize. Shoot three people, French kisses a minor. Exactly. Exactly. Screw up that smug smirk from your face. It's too much early to think you've won. I'll make new tricks to stump you. I will. You may mock me only when you're done. Come back for the next exciting installment. Whoosh! Okay. Yeah, yeah, end of Evangelion is good, so. Uh, but yeah, no, I just wanted to kind of finish off with, um, the Zelda and just kind of say that, yeah, like, at the end of the day, you know, for me, it's too early to really, like, tell if the game is worth a recommendation. But I feel like, uh, the way that the internet goes is that there is always a best game until the next one comes along. Breath of the Wild was the best game until, um, I'm thinking God of War 2018 is probably the follow-up to the best game. Um, I want to say, uh, The Last of Us 2 filled that spot. Um, I want to say, uh, Elden Ring was that. God of War Ragnarok was that. Um, yes, actually, yeah, if you haven't played Breath of the Wild, just play Breath of the Wild right now. I, 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 it's probably a consistent, like, hey, you know, just play the previous game. It doesn't really go on sale much. It does a little bit, but... Yes, I mean, you know, it's not really any reason to jump into the second one. I got a die here. Wow. So finally, after all this trials and trepidation, after 68 minutes of stream, check it out. There's a new route with new Pokemon going on. Uh, here we have uh, Electrike, who is actually a super cool Pokemon. I am not going to get him though. But uh, yeah, Electric is actually the super common Pokemon you can get here. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, better mechanics. Don't forget about the. I, I, there is an upcoming rival fight. That's why. That's why I saved. But I forgot how many trainers were in front of that. Anyway, we got a Poochie. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, the Pokemon on this route because finally we have a route where you can find Pokemon. Uh, he also has the ability to paralyze you if you use physical attacks. Oh yeah, he does. I got Water Gun. I got Water Gun. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so you can find Electrike, you can still find Zigzagoons, uh, okay, I take it back if you have, oh no, 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 yep, sorry, uh, no, no, you can find Plusle Minin, but, uh, Plusle is more common in Sapphire, and Minin is more common in, in Ruby, um, technically they are in both, but you are more likely to find one in, you know, this game than the other. Uh, you're also able to find a poison type called Gulpin. Everyone loves him. Get all Aaron, I just can't do anything with him right now. Uh, you can still find Oddish and Wingo is still there. So that's cool. Uh, Gulpin was one I was very considering for my team, but I ended up not going with him. Um, I just kind of felt like, mm, maybe, maybe I didn't quite know how to play with poison types yet, so... Kept him on the on the down low for now, but it was a, it was a good consideration for like a sleeper like you know cool Pokemon to be using because he's not that bad. It's just 
not quite my thing. Uh, let's go back to Nonogram. Let's, I need, I really wanted to keep getting those levels, I tell ya. Good old Electrike. <laughs> Good old Electrike. Wait, now I'm thinking, which one's this Pokemon that paralyzes you? Because he doesn't have an Electrike. And I know he, like, he has a Shroomish if Trico wasn't his Grass type. But currently, Trico is his Grass type. So I actually think I'm safe on that one. The problem is, I don't really have a Grass type to, or, or counter for a Grass type. I actually, I'm also thinking, hmm. Do I need a flying type? I actually don't really have a grass type counter just yet. I will get a grass type counter later this stream. But I don't really think I have one yet. So we might have to We might have to wing this. Or do I just catch a wing on call of the day? I'm gonna catch a wing on call of the day. <laughs> Listen, I, I need a wing girl. I need him. That's not a wing girl. <laughs> Well, because I'm thinking, he's got he's got his Trico, which has evolved. And what do I have that that will like stop the Trico from just using? I guess it's only got Absorb as a Grass type attack, but it is kind of like I don't know. That's probably going to throw me off. Gosh, being paralyzed sucks when you're trying to run away from things. Can you guess which Pokemon? Uh, Zigzagoon. Zigzags. Zigzatches? Hi there. Oh, back to, back to Agron. Oh, we're back to Agron? Dang it. <laughs> I like how um, I haven't commented on the, this uh, road that travels over the route, by the way. This is the cycling road. And it's this, like, weird kind of snaky path that goes on top of a different snaky path. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, because the cycling road has always been like a walled off area. And now it's just like, you know, it's something you get to witness, and it's like, whoa, look at this, like, you know, it's, it's clearly not a 3D game, but it's like, whoa, it's got like areas on top of other areas. You know, you can see this guy riding his bike. I know Wingar's not too common, so I'm probably not going to expect him, but... Yeah, I'm just curious if... Oh my gosh. Why is Nonogram so slow? Uh, the German words are, are an amalgamation of the... I think it's here, isn't it? It is here. Amalgamation of the German word for mine shaft stolen and junior for the small one and coloss. I bet you can guess that one is called German for colossus. The little one is just a weird name. It's like Glutexo. There he is. <laughs> Hey, Bendo, so this is where you were. How's it going? Have you been ready your Pokemon? I'll check for you. I'll check for you. They often uh, have that with the German names. The one in the middle is strange. They don't do like a portmanteau. Alright, so anyway, here's the, the trainer. He's just casually chilling here. Uh, I have come a little unprepared because uh, he sent out his fire type first. So, uh, he has a water type, a grass type, and a fire type, uh, no matter what, um, you know, starter you're doing. Uh, but the different starter determines which one of those water, grass, and uh, fire types is swapped out with the starter. So, uh, he'll have Numal uh, if you are if you pick Torchic or Mudkip, but if you pick Trico, it's just got a, a you know, a combustion. Uh, the Numal will be level 18, has Growl, Tackle, and Ember. Nothing too weird, and Numal is not that strong a Pokemon, so that's actually pretty alright. Uh, Grovile is going to be the one where I'm like, hmm, we'll see how we go. Evolution of Numal, so... Yeah, oh, yeah, nu Numal is a great evolution. Love him. Um, so, anyway, here comes Groval. Uh, it's level 20. So, that's going to be the big kind of like, ooh, let's see how we go. Uh, but, I'm going to wing the fact that even though uh, Ground Fire... So, it's... Uh, it is Ground Fire. Sorry, yes. So, Water is Super Duper. Uh, stone... Uh, oh, uh, we call it Rock in this one. But, yeah, no, it's, it is Fire Ground. So, yeah. Um, so, Groval here... I'm, yeah, when he uses Absorb, that is a quad weakness on me. So I'm definitely going to... Oh, I might be able to do it twice, but he is also absorbing that. 
Tackle is... No, I'm screwed. This was the thing I was like, ooh, what do I have that will fight? That will fight Grovar? And the answer is nothing, really. I got Carrot, but I don't think he's got really anything that will, like, hugely resist it. He does look cool, though, so... I got Nightshade, but... I don't think this is really going to take him out, so... He knows Absorb, Quick Attack, Fury Cutter, and Pursuit. Um... It's pretty alright, but... Fire and Water Star both look progressively cool. That is also true. Yeah, where is it gonna... He's gonna take me first, unless I go with an item. Now we're gonna go with the item. Good thing we found that super potion earlier. Thanks, Brushy. Uh, but yeah, if you uh, if you pick the other starters, uh, his grass type would be a Shroomish that has Tackle, Stun Sport, Leech Seed, and Mega Drain. Mega Drain is probably a way meaner attack than having uh, Absorb. So, uh, Plank kind of looks like the coolest for the first evolution. The second still cool, not as much. Yeah, true, true. Well, that is the Grovar done. So. As long as I can kind of wing it, we'll see how we go. Oh, you try to learn Fury Swipes. Interesting. Astonish is... Mm. I've never really liked Astonish as an attack. I've always felt it's maybe a bit too weak. Although it probably does more damage than Scratch, but I feel like Nightshade is kind of my catch-all on that one. Um, so I'll kind of keep it for the moment. We'll see how we go. Uh, this one's the other Pokemon I'm a little worried about. In comes, uh, Whelmer. Whelmer is, uh, water type, which means Ninkada is still screwed. Either way, which is kind of annoying. Um, Whelmer has a lot of health, which means I don't really think Nightshade's actually gonna help. Uh, it's okay, but I don't think that's gonna carry. He knows Water Gun. Uh, listen, we got, we got two super potions. <laughs> Sonic has a 100% chance of, uh, stun on the first use. Oh, is that actually how that works? Sure, that's not a fake out. Fake out is that um, where it's like if you use it in the first turn of the match, it's high priority and it always hits and always stuns. But I thought it was just like a, a high chance, like a twenty or thirty percent kind of like a um, bite. So I'm not sure I'll take him out. He's probably just going to spam water gun because that is an attack. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, splash, growl, and roll out are also attacks that he's got. Um, Rollout is probably a, a cruel one. Uh, do, you, do you know about the name Whale Lord used Body Slam with a picture of Pikachu looking up with a terrified face? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, people could feel that Whale Lord is less dense than it. That is also true, yes. Okay, so I'm hoping Nonogram doesn't get absolutely like cream puffed by a water gun here. Dang it! Well... We got one shot. We got one shot, which is using Brushy and just kind of snagging a bit more damage in there. Oh, but he, he's used gra Growl. That's going to throw me off a bit. Thank you, Brushy. Thank you, Brushy. I did spam two Super Potions, so it wasn't the most fair uh, trainer encounter, but... You know what? We needed to get past this guy. This was... This battle was a complete war. Oh, I forgot to mention as well. Um... Yeah, so the other starters, if you, uh, if you pick Torchic, he's going to have Marsh Tomp. Same level as mine, level 20. Water Gun, Bide, Mudshot, Foresight. It is a hard fight, yeah. Because he's level 20? Like, that is rather steep. That it probably is a really steep fight. Um, and uh, if you pick Trico, his starter would be a Combuskin. It knows Focus Energy, Ember, Double Kick, and Peck. Double Kick and Peck are going to throw you off. Especially because, like, yeah, oh boy, I have a Grass type. And he's just gonna absolutely annihilate him with Peck. I don't think you have anything else that's, like, too, like, worrisome with, um, with Peck, to be honest. Like, what else does Peck get? Bug types? I guess, but it's not like you're sending bug types against, you know, Combuskin. Yeah, so. But yeah, very tough fight, actually, to be honest. I think the levels are a bit, you know, they're super steep on that fight, so. Anyway, how many times am I going to use the Pokemon Center in this place? Tons, apparently. I'm making progress. I'm making progress. And they gave you the Super Potions. That is one thing. Like, as long as you've got, like, a decent team variety and, uh, you probably had a Flying-type, because... 
Oh, there's the Wingo. There's the Wingo. I wanted a Wingo earlier, so I could have just had him, you know, sweep the, uh, the Grovar, but no. Oh, this whole route, by the way, is filled with, um, like, invisible items, so you might be able to find, like, lots of, like, hidden stuff here, but... I don't think there's really anything, like, you know, that you need, it's just fun stuff, so... Uh... So, anyway, I... Yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna finish up with the Zelda discussion. Uh, right after this guy uh, wants to see my Pokemon. Cool. Uh, there's always going to be a greatest game of all time that people are circulating around. I feel like Elden Ring probably was it for a very long time. Um, but just, you know, don't like buy into the hype too hard. When people say this, you know, a game is the greatest game of all time, treat it with a grain of salt because, uh, you know, the internet loves hyperbolizing and they have the attention span of. Good on nature power, by the way. I have the attention span of, um, like, two goldfish. They forget that stuff happens, so... Yeah, don't feel bad if you don't play this game right now, but... I know, we'll see. I'll play it. I'll play it soonish. I'm glad this Lombre is just chilling there. Can't deal too much damage to me. It's the evolution of Lotad, by the way. Who, of course, as we've established, is a Sapphire-only Pokémon. And Nuzleaf... Oh, I used to always think a Nuzlocke challenge was related to Nuzleaf. Listen, the name's kind of there, so... He's, a uh, He's Grass-type. He's not Grass-dark yet, is he? So... I think this Leech Life would be okay. We'll see. Yeah... Finally! The Bug-type attack is actually paying off, finally. Oh no, he's using Taylor Swift! I was about to say thank you next. That's not that's not Taylor Swift. Um it's called uh Blanis? Blanis. Good old Blanis. Oh I have foreseen your intentions. I cannot possibly lose! In fact, there is no speed in German, it's called Initiative. Initiative kind of makes sense, to be honest. It's a little bit weird when you're running away, but... Definitely makes sense for, like, who goes first. Like, who has the initiative? Um... Abra is probably gonna... Oh, gosh, what type is this? Hidden Power is a type. Oh. It is not a strong type against me. Cool. Um... Yeah, Hidden Power is literally a type. It is always the same type when the same Pokémon uses it, but it's a different type for who uses it. It's always a fun and interesting attack, and it's kind of a shame they've removed the newer Pokemons, but it also makes sense, because people would train Pokemon specifically to have a very specific, uh, hidden power type. as that fun bit of extra type coverage that people don't expect. And to be honest, yeah, fair call. Fair call if you remove that. I prophesied my own demise! Finally, Ninkadar is pulling his own, his own, uh, wait, by the bootstraps. We got Oddish. I feel so confident I can take out the Oddish myself. There's only one more trainer left, so don't worry. The evolution is called Tangleist instead of Shift Free. Tangleist. What an interesting name, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always find it's weird that the internet um, has that favorite game. Like, I'm amazed that Elden Ring was, like, that popular, because I just don't feel like, you know, like, I'm not too sure, maybe this is me, where it's like, out of all those best games of all time people mention, it is a Tengu. Oh, true, yeah. Out of all these best games I mentioned, the only one I actually did play was Breath of the Wild, but even then, I kind of felt, well, Breath of the Wild was a very good game, but I still don't even know if it's even the best Zelda game, let alone the best game of all time. I think there's a lot to it. Elden Ring did not uh, handhold people at all. That is true. I I get why people like Elden Ring. It's and it's sold crazy numbers. I'll definitely agree to that. Um, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not too sure if. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure if games that like don't hold your hand. You know, like how do I phrase it? Let's just say, last week when I was talking about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, 
Um, like, and that's a game that, to be honest, doesn't hold your hand, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Um, but what I really appreciated about playing it was this, like, earnest amount of, like, discovery and, and playfulness and just smart design of where, you know, where the map led you, where all the things were, where, what kind of challenges you're expected to do. And it was just this, like, degree of mastery that you'd experience, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm still kind of playing, I'm still working through those other characters. Oh, we're finally at a new city, by the way. It took a whole, whole hour and 25 minutes. Over there. Um, but I feel like, you know, the reason why Tony Hawk is kind of feeling special is because... You know, it's... it feels like it's... I think it's... It feels super fresh and it's applied things in a way that I've never seen before. Uh, let's listen to this guy's story. When you see the, s the setting sun, does it make you want to go home? No! Also, I was thinking, school is so magical, don't you agree? No! Also, I was thinking, I still want to go on a vacation. Would you happen to know a nice place? No! Also, I was thinking, habit is so relaxed, don't you agree? Yes! <laughs> what an interesting guy. Uh, we're gonna stretch- oh, cycling left and right for the, for the egg. Oh boy, yeah. We'll get to that in a bit, but... Yeah, I'm not too sure if Elden Ring, like, in my mind, could be... The greatest game of all time purely because I think it relies a lot on the iteration of its previous titles. I think it can be a super duper great game, but the best, I want to say, is definitely a tricky feat. And for me, it's still Metroid Prime. We're still, we're still eternally doing Metroid Prime. But um, very importantly, every single game that I think we've been talking about for the greatest games of all time have all been sequels. Uh, Elden Ring is still somewhat a sequel. Oh, look at that, I hate Shem already. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, just getting the HM right off the bat. So, I don't believe we've got the move for it, but the gym is up here. And yeah, Slateport City did not have a gym. We just went, walked through and we're like, oh, well, that's cool, we're cool. Don't sneak up on me. I used to train Pokemon by using that instead of the EP teller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of, like, refights that you can have. Ah, he's constricting me! Ah. Also has the gamble- oh boy, yeah. Pokemon, bring back the gambling! I wanna waste my money! Let me do it! Uh, so, anyway, I'm done on, on best games of all time. Uh, but I- but... <laughs> to tangent from a best game of all time, I want to mention a game that I started playing. Uh, EP Tell has the experience shit, by the way. I just looked up the English word. Ah, yeah. Did we get that now? Is that. I don't know. Hold on. Where do you, where do you get the. I'm looking it up. I forgot how soon in the game you can get that. It would be very nice if I could get it very soon. Uh, you get it in. After getting the letter. So. After a bit. After a bit. You can't get it right now, so. Because different. Best games of all time for me. There are several because different genres can both be the best game. That is a hundred percent true. I I definitely agree. Where you know, I, and and your favorite and I want to say this again. Your favorite game is not necessarily, um, you know, the best game in your opinion. I do really like Metroid Prime. Um, is it my favorite game? I'm not a hundred percent sure if it is like like, my favorite, as in... But I do keep returning to it a lot, so maybe it is. Um, but yeah, Age of Empires 2 for you? Yeah. You know, I can definitely see that. Um, I can definitely see people saying, Oh, I'm getting Rollouts fan. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. I'm definitely dead on the next one if he hits it. Can I get another gram? Oh, one more. Dang it! Oh, heck yeah! <laughs> okay. Uh, it's that peak in a particular mix of macro and micro focus RTS. That, yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's cool, and that's what I like about, you know... You know, when we don't, like, reduce things to just going, This game is the best game of all time, and if you tell me otherwise, then you're an idiot, and you don't know anything about video games, it's like... You know... We all have our preferences, and we also... There's a lot of games with cool things in them. I think, you know... There's a lot of games out there that have... You know... Even, even the worst games, a lot of them will have something redeemable, or something quirky. Um, and that's fine, and, and that, 
that's why, like, you know, you don't, I don't have to go out and say Tears of the Kingdom is the greatest game of all time and, you know, I, I don't know where I'm really going with this, but I feel like, yeah, internet discussions can get a bit reductive about things. Um, and, uh, uh, which leads me to a tangent of a game that is not very good. It really wasn't very good. I have been playing this for a few days. Uh, I've been playing Marvel's The Avengers? The 2020 game that they showed off at a PlayStation State of Play, I think? Um, some of the greatest games of all time just did not have the hardware available to do what they really want. Oh, yo, definitely, yeah. Hitman Blood Money is a very fun game, but I do feel that the newer ones are great in the fact that they actually kind of realize the things that I really wanted the older ones to do. Lord of Assassination is one of the best games of all time. Uh, oh, sorry. One of, yeah. Yeah. Did you check out TV? Oh my gosh. Even <laughs> they put you on TV without telling you? I'm pretty sure that's not allowed in California. I did play the first of the Hitman reboots, uh, but I did really like it. I did, I did find it, um... It did the job pretty well, so... That's good. You know, it's good to have Pokemon battles. But if your Pokemon gets hurt... Hitman Blood Money with densely populated maps like the new ones. Oh, the TV's flashing. I should check the TV. Ah, look at that pink sprite, like I intended it to be someone. We are the Pokemon Fan Club, we're on the air! On this program, we get your opinions and I shout them out on your behalf. Isn't it a fantastic program concept? Today we bring you this report from our reporter, whom we sent out to the Pokemon Fan Club. So just who is today's featured Pokemon fan? Biendo! So let's hear what Biendo has to say about Nonogram, the Ninkada, and I will shout those words of love out loud on TV. Hooah! Let's shout! And let's see, what was it about Ninkada that so attracted Biendo? Go home! Whoa, such a spectacular declaration! The love of this trainer for the Ninkada comes across loud and clear. Hmm, oh, there's still more. Let's check it out. Let me see now. We asked Biendo, what does Pokemon mean to you? Eh? Bravo! That's the best shout I've had all day. Eh? It makes you don't want to shout it out loud again and again. Now that we've had a great shout, it's time to say goodbye until next time. So let's all have one last shout. All together now. Eh? Uh, uh, can you gamble on this one? You can't gamble on this one. The German one, you could, uh, enter the gambling there, but not use things on exchange money. Um, the European version of Platinum was like that, so I had to experience that from Pokemon Platinum onwards. Um, but in this one, uh, it was, you know, it was gambling in my version, so that's fun. I'll showcase it, I'll showcase it. Yeah, the TV stuff is kind of cool, because it's like, oh, you know, it ties it. oh, no. Oh, Uncle, please. I forgot the voice I gave him last time. I want to challenge this gym and see how much better I become. Please, may I please? Now, hold on, Wally. Since you started living with Pokemon, you have grown quite a lot stronger. But don't you think you're pushing it to suddenly challenge a gym? I'm not pushing it. If I could buy forces with routes, we could beat anyone. Oh, hi, Bando. I've gotten a lot stronger since we met. Bando, I want you and my uncle to understand that. Bando, please, will you have a battle with me? No. Oh, if you want battle, mate, my uncle won't know when I've really become strong. And he's just gonna stand there eternally until you kick his butt. Now, Wally here is potentially one of the strongest trainers of all time. He's got rolls, it's level 16. I think it should have evolved by now. No, it's level 20. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll give you we'll give you the rain check on that one. Uh, but this thing knows growl, confusion, double team, and teleport. He's got one move that can mean something. And that's teleport, because that means he should have left the fight years ago. But now, he's just gonna pull a banned in tournament moves. Is teleport banned in tournaments? Oh boy. Oh boy, Wally. Wally, Wally. Oh my goodness. And that was it. Hello! <laughs> I took a lot of money from him, jeez. Uncle, I'll go back to Verdant Earth. You know, thank you, being a trainer is tough, isn't it? It's not, it's not enough just to have Pokemon and make them battle. That isn't what being a real trainer is about. Wally, there's no need to be so down on yourself. Why? What's keeping you from becoming stronger and stronger? Come on, let's go home. Everyone's waiting for you. <laughs> it's called, uh, Trastla in German. It involves into... Kur... Kurilla. Well, that's almost curlier. 
Be you know, it just dawned on me that you must be the trainer who kept an eye out for Wally when he caught his Pokemon. Why don't you visit us in Verdant Earth sometime? I'm sure Wally would, he, would enjoy it. Uh, he, I kicked his butt. Corellia. Okay. Speaking of Corellia, I'm gonna Corellia my wallet. <laughs> this is Morville Game Corner. Okay, you want some points for the games? But you don't have a coin case, idiot dummy. This person heard I like mud gifts, apparently. Where do you get the coin case? I've completely forgotten. Into it. Quadavar. Please give me a coin case, lady, at the beginning. Oh. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> you have to effectively barter. Oh, sup, Panda Club? How you doing? You have to effectively barter. But we, I guess we'll do that, we'll do that in a bit. I, oh, I completely forgot. I should have pre-bought it. Oh, well. Uh, so the first one's a different name, second is the exact same, the third is the same but spelled different. An energetic customer, you may call me Rydal. Your running shoes, they're awfully filthy. I know! I had to walk in sand. Come from far away? Nah, not really. Is that right? I guess you have no need for my bike. No. You're saying that you came all this way from Little Root? My goodness, that's ridiculously far. If you had one of my bikes, you could go anywhere easily while feeling the gentle caress of the wind. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bike. Oh, wait a second, I forgot to tell you that there are two kinds of bikes. There are the Mark Bike and the Acro Bike. The Mark Bike is for cyclists who want to feel the wind with their bodies. And an Acro Bike is for those who prefer technical rides with real sweet art. So you can have whichever one you like. This is a kind of cool mechanic. Um... How about you? I'm playing Pokemon Ruby at the moment, so feeling good. Oh, dude, nice. What part are you in, Ruby, right now? I'm currently two badges in, and I haven't actually done the gym fight this stream, and I'm probably gonna... We'll probably fit that gym fight in by the end, but... Man, I was hoping that we'd get a little further. I didn't realize how, like, sluggish I'd be <laughs> through this whole experience. You can't walk on Cycling Road. Dang it. Well, okay, so we got the bike, uh, which is weird, because the guy just gives you the bike. You got two bikes. One is the fast bike and one is the hoppy bike. Uh, the fast bike is generally the one you want. How do you like my, the way my raven colored hair streams by? Are ravens like black or like... I guess so. The triathlon is hard in the extreme. You have to complete the three events of swimming, cycling, and running. I have to admit, I really want to play Gen 3 again now. Hey, it's worth playing again and playing alongside if you want as well. Two hours a week. That's what I'm doing, basically. Okay, we got Magnemite here. Magnemite is probably gonna kick my butt, because I don't really have... No, he's probably got Sonic Boom, and I don't really have a strat against that, so we'll go with Kipperoni instead. Uh, no, not make it through because of nostalgia. So is that it? Uh, fair enough, if you just want to watch me. That's all cool. I actually kind of hope that I can inspire a bunch of people to play alongside me. Like, if I play a game, it's like, oh, you know, like, if you're, if you're curious, you can just, you know, play along again or something like that. But then sometimes it's like I beat a game in like two streams and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Pokemon battles are hard, too. Oh, look at this guy chilling around. There's lots of trainers on here. Yo, you! Some old games I cannot play through again, like Sid Meier's Pirates and. Oh, dude. Sid Meier's Pirates takes forever, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh. So anyway, so I mentioned that, yeah, I played Marvel's The Avengers, uh, Route 121. Oh, way ahead of me. Doesn't take forever? I don't know how the mechanics work. Maybe it's still forever on a, on a first run. Yeah, I knew he had Sonic Boom. I knew he had Sonic Boom. That would throw everyone off. Sonic Boom is a flat 20 damage. Which is kind of mean early game, and it becomes less mean as you go throughout the game, but... Oh boy. Oh, it's just not the same. Fair enough, fair call. Oh my gosh, he's got another Magnemite. Let's get Nonogram in for a bit more experience. Just can't submerge myself in the game. You gotta do a pirate pun. Uh... Because the sea... I don't know. We're <laughs> going with that. Um, anyway, Marvel The Avengers. This game is very bizarre. Because it came out in 2020. It came out mid-2020. And they threw DLC at it, and I'm dead, nice. They threw DLC at it, and already they have announced 
the end of support was March. The game is now in its, you know, end of life stage. And all they're doing right now is keeping the lights on, basically. If there's any, like, you know, quick bug fixes that they need to do, they're going to do it until September, when they will hard shut down the game. Uh, it might not turn the, uh, the online off. We don't know. They only said it won't turn it off for consoles, but for me as a PC player, I don't know what that means. Uh, to be honest though, I've tried playing the game and I have not been able to matchmake into any multiplayer game, so it doesn't really matter anyways. Uh, is it Mudshot? Uh, yes it is, and I don't know why I haven't been using it, but... I kinda want Nonogram to keep getting the, the experience right now, cause... Like, I've been focusing on him so much, and it has been a struggle, but... He's, uh, also, I just remembered there's a person over here. Why am I fighting this person after... I have, like, no health? Who knows? Um, yeah, I completely forgot, sorry. Uh, Jaslyn. Good old Abra. Uh, let's get him with the Fury. Oh, what type of hidden power are we going with? Oh, it's still a weak one. We'll never know what actual type it was, just that it's a weak type to me both times. Um, so, but yeah, no, the Avengers game, um, if... So I will preface this by saying, if you intended to play the game, just know that, yes, before September 31st or 30, check their FAQ, um, this year, 2023, uh, the game will, you know, it's, it's on sale as usual, although they have bundled the DLC in and buy it as a definitive edition now, so that's cool, but uh, you can't buy it after that date. They are hard removing the game after being on sale for three and a bit years, it's going to disappear. I hate games that do this. Why do, why do game publishers make games only for them to disappear before the studio? Abra line is so strong. It is. Although Abra himself is not actually that strong, and especially when he keeps using hidden power on me. It doesn't seem to be working out for him. Um, I hate game studios where, like, games just disappear. I get why. I get why licensing is a thing. I wish they would agree to being able to sell the game in perpetuity without needing to, like... You know, fix the license, it's just like, you made a game! That's your piece of media. D streaming media is like this as well, you can't have TV shows with the same music that they aired on TV with, because technically releasing on the streaming service is a re-release and you had to, you know, re-license re all the music. One of the best games ever, Battle for Middle Earth 2. Good old Battle for Middle Earth 2. It's a good one. I've got nothing against Megamind, we'll just go back to Kipper on you again. Pick me four. Ooh, I have, I've only played Pikmin 1, and only kind of recently, so... I'm curious to play the rest, but I heard a lot of people actually really like Pikmin 3, and I never played Pikmin 3. Uh, there were two ga three games I never played as a Wii U owner. I guess one is Breath of the Wild, which, fair call, because I played on the Switch. Pikmin 3, and Star Fox Zero. And at least Pikmin 3, I have the ability to play. Uh, I think you've sp spoken about Overlord before, yeah. yeah. Um... Look at this guy just chilling. It's so glaringly obvious. It says right on your bike. Right or 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 right. I'm glad this guy exists. He says the name 45 times. Oh my goodness. That one was also in a way a Pikmin game. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool to have like those kinds of mechanics in kind of tangentially related games. So anyway, back to the Avengers. Uh, so I bought it for 10 bucks, 10 bucks Australian, which is, to be honest, fair for what is in it, but not fair because I think, like, this was the first game in a while I felt my time was wasted. I actually felt a bit, like, poor playing it. I just, it's, it just didn't feel quite right, the, the Avengers game. Um, so, how, uh... Real money euros. Oh, it's uh, it's probably less than ten. It's probably less than ten. It might be like s seven or eight, um, and that's tax included. So, because uh, it went to it went eighty five percent off. So spot it if you see it on sale, eighty five percent off. It'll probably be about that price, um, but it might be here and there. Oh, side note by the way, I mentioned as well in the last stream um, that uh, like why would anyone pay one hundred and twenty bucks for um, Redfall when you could buy Tears of the Kingdom for, um, sorry, 120 Australian for Redfall when you can buy Tears of the Kingdom for 74 bucks. What I didn't realize is that Redfall was 70 US in America. It was 
Tears of the Kingdom was is also 70 US. Nintendo are pulling the $70 US game. But it didn't apply to us. Even without our JB Hi-Fi low pricing, we uh, interestingly still had a normal $90 price game? I don't know why we did not have a price creep when it came to... Like that one. Surprisingly, 0.61 euro is one Australian dollar. Yeah, the Aussie dollar's not doing too great right now. We're pretty we're pretty weak right, right now. Sometimes the Aussie dollar will, will be like about 20% better compared to like worldwide, but right now it's not there. Is that a level 7 Voltorb? Sure. Okay. This shadow keeps disappearing. 70 euro oh, that that hurts. That hurts a lot. Because now do the comparison where like I paid 74 Australian for mine. That's under a certain birthday present tree. Um, but, yeah, like, I don't know. DS games stayed at 40, yeah. Switch games, even here, they, they frequent $80 more. Like, $80 seems to be a bit more of the asking price. I think it's really only Zelda and Fire Emblem seem to get away with $90. New 3DS. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth the, the price of those games. I think also they had to compete with the App Store games. Nowadays, it's like, who competes with the App Store? No one. <laughs> There's, you don't, like, no one makes games for the App Store anymore. It just, it just doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Maybe there's the small games here and there, but other than that, it's like, this is the big ones that try to sink your money. Like Marvel's The Avengers. So let me describe how this game started. The first thing I noticed when I started the game was I was presented with three options. Play Now, Operatives, and Options. Now to me, I thought Play Now was like, start the game. Operatives sounded like extra modes, you know, kind of like side mission kinds of things. And Options was obviously the Options menu. I looked in Options, set all my settings, there was no benchmark, which I thought was like, oh, okay, because previous Crystal Dynamics games had benchmarks, but sure. I then clicked Play Now, and I was immediately prompted or well, not prompted, I was immediately shown a two, three minute uh, full motion video cutscene spoiling the entire game. Oh yeah, also, the reason why you got two bikes. One minute plus? Oh my gosh, you were <laughs> terrible at bike riding. So we'll get to the bottom, but this is actually a very fun mechanic, the fact that this guy times your bike ride. And obviously you're gonna take forever when you're fighting the trainers. Um, But, uh, I'm gonna go back up to the top, and then I'm gonna, like, have a go again. So, Harbor Mail, I should have bought one. There we go. Very important. I look forward to talking uh, to my brother-in-law, not quite yet, but if nothing unexpected happens, he will probably end up being my brother-in-law soon. He's a game dev. Ooh! Very nice. Very nice. You gotta tell me what kinds of, like, things he, uh, he works on in the game dev. Like, does he do engine stuff? Is he doing, like... I, I know a mate who, um, did a traffic simulation on a L.A. Noire, and it's like the smallest part of the game that you can just skip with a button. But it's also like, man, you know, that's kind of neat that you've worked on that. Um... I love that guy. He's not even on the credits as well, he got taken out of the credits. Such a shame. So we're gonna try and do this in the quickest way possible. I don't think the collisions actually matters, but I think the time you take does. And it's a bit tricky, and you need to do it with the Mark bike. The, the Mark bike. 11 seconds. Oh, okay. I'm still too slow. Hold on, let me, let me look this up as well while I'm at it. Do do do, do do do. I'm looking it up. I think. Hello, following situation. Okay, so the so you need to. The following situations need to uh, give you a point, and having four points means you did the worst, and having zero points means you did the best. The ride takes more than 12.10 seconds, the ride takes one minute, the player collides once, and the player collides a hundred times. Okay, hold on, let's, let's see if I can do this. So I need to collide a hundred times, which is probably going to be very easy if I just do this. A bunch of topics I look forward to talking with them about, like game pricing. Ooh, yeah, definitely. Game pricing is kind of... But I'm also looking at it going, I don't think there actually is a reward for, like, actually getting it in the time. I'm just curious of, like, 
You hit the walls a hundred times. A hundred is so ridiculous. I wish I was counting as well. But I'm gonna assume I'm at like 20, so we'll keep going for a bit. Um, so anyway, so I clicked play now and I got spoiled on the game. And then I also had all the characters available. And I was just prompted to like, you know, go to the war table and pick missions. And I thought, where's the tutorial? Where's anything? And why was this play now? It turns out you have to go back to the menu, click operatives, and you are immediately, uh, you know, shown the fifth operative, the last one, which is random modes. It's the same as the play now button. Uh, but operatives four, three, and two are the three DLC things. Uh, we'll work better with the other bike. Uh, yeah, maybe. Probably at like 60 now? I don't know. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'll probably take a little bit. Um, so, the, so the story was Operative 1. I'm hearing zigzagoons in the, in the music. I love it as well. I always, I always got like thrown off by that. It's like, why am I hearing like Pokemon cries? And it's really only like this game and uh, Diamond Pearl do it, right? I don't think they did it in any of the other games. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so anyway, so okay, so I got spoiled on the on the game. Cool. They failed on the the menu design, um, and uh, I was, uh, you know, I then started playing the game. And uh, for the first three hours, it was fine. Uh, I think Leaf Green Fire did as well. Yeah. For the first three hours, the Avengers game was fine. You followed as uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Kamala Khan, uh, who, uh, as a younger character, she went to a Avengers Expo, basically. And for some odd reason, they announced a brand new power, like, supply. Uh, some magical rock. And uh, obviously, if you're announcing a power supply at a conference, you're obviously, you know, obviously something goes wrong. Well, it turns out they're doing this at San Francisco and the Brooklyn Bridge blew up a bit. So all the Avengers go over, they find Taskmaster. There it is, yeah. That was 99 plus. It's fine. I am aghast. You're perhaps not cut out for this unfortunate cycling business. You ought to give serious thought to returning that bike to Rydal. That is the message. I hope everyone s let that sink in because Hitting the wall a hundred times is like... Like, I hit it eight times, I think, when I was, like, just kind of going about before. But, like, that is incredible. That is an incredible line of dialogue. So scathing. So brutal. Uh, let's go over to this person, who is, uh, finally... Oh, uh, well, it's, it's the fast time without hitting anything. That's gonna take me... Okay, I'll give this person a thing. I'll be able to get by Harbour Mouth. Wait a minute! I don't think he even gives you one in the remake as well. But he gives you a line of dialogue and I'll read it out. He says, Bravo, splendid showing. Your love of cycling comes from deep within your heart. You've shaken me to the very soul. I think he says that in the remake as well. I'm pretty sure that's just it, so. We got the game case, that's that's all good. Um, so anyway, so you'd play as, uh, as Miss Marvel for a bit. Um, the prologue, uh, you would play as each character a bit. And then, I want to know, uh, so you start the campaign by playing as um, Thor. You punch a bunch of people, and then eventually, uh, no, no, the experience share is a fair bit later still, isn't it? Uh, I like, uh, X and Y. I kind of like leveling up everyone. It's a thousand bucks. Let's do it. Alright, so there's actually two gambling games in this one. This is incredible as well, but first of all, let's look at the prizes. Uh, so, you can get little dolls, and I already got a Mudkip doll. I think you actually get one based on his starter, I think. Um, first turn was kind of like X and Y. First turn was a bit weird. You got it way too late game, though. That's a problem. Um, yeah, yeah, X and Y, it's too easy with the, with the thing there, but I do like the idea of... And actually, I kind of like just in the newer games where the leveling is pretty normal. Uh, you'd have to know what these TMs are, but fortunately, I am here. This is Double Team, and alright, Double Team, uh, Psychic, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam. These are very useful, but I want to say you might be able to buy them later as well, so. Uh, last Pokemon game I played. Um, kind of interestingly, you can't buy Pokemon here. Uh, but, 
these are these are roulette tables. They actually have uh, these minimum wages as well. And how the roulette works is that there's basically you know there's 12 spots on the table. You can either do uh, the yellows, the greens, the purples, or a certain Pokemon. Your why not Azuril, Skitty, or Makuita? Sure. And you can obviously pick a specific one, or you can just roll the roulette. I don't think it's the most fun game. Um, oh, but there is one thing. I should have... Oh, I shouldn't have backed out. But basically, as the table fills out... Actually, maybe it is a bit fair, like, when you think about it. But, like, as the table fills out, you see there's six balls in the top right. What this means is that the ball is still sitting there. So it puts a ball on Makuhita there. But it does mean that... You know, now there's only 11 options. Which means your odds are actually a little better as this goes on. And if you play this kind of right, you'll make it out. You'll make your money back in some way, because you'll actually be able to, you know, guess what's going on now. So you can see that, oh, well now there's two on a purple. So that's a hit. I won 12 coins. I've made all my money back, but I'm going to keep going a bit. There's four yellows on the table and only nine spots left. That means I have a better chance of hitting a yellow than really any other color. Unfortunately, I didn't get that, but you know what? Now it's a, a four and eight chance. And I'll get three times the money back, so... Or I could be... It could be incredibly cruel right now. There's no point... Oh. It, it automatically does the, um, the growing for you as well, so if you really wanted to, you could kinda... It's still a bit of an odds game, so... Different grass and brute, 110. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I just made all my money back. Obviously, the slot machine is where it's at. Which slot machine is the best? I still don't know. But basically, how this uh, how the slot machine works is uh, you hit down three times and you mash A and you hope for the best. You burn your money and you hope for the best. But what I love about all these gambling games and these and these Pokemon is that they eventually pay out. I just don't know if I've started on the right amount of money to make this work. But you can see, it just starts working, it starts paying off, so... Uh, the problem we have with some games is that they're too easy now, and too... So, definitely Pokemon is too, like, too easy now. Although I'd also say, like, Red and Blue is kind of on the easier side. It depends on how much experience they give you. Just keep mashing A, you'll eventually get it, so... Anyway, the Avengers game continues. You got part on nice, nice. I think I had to do it for um, a Professor Oak challenge. I've actually done it on my silver run, but uh, oh boy, I'm still struggling to catch the the roaming Pokemon on my my um. Okay, cool. Thanks for the replays. And I got Lotte. Cool. So you can see if you're at it for long enough, you'll get enough of those charges, and that's how you get into the bonus game. Since this thing was gambling, I got disabled in Gen 3 on short notice in Germany and perhaps in more of Europe. I replaced an emerald at least so you could get coins just by, uh, just, not just from buying. That is cool. I do miss the gambling. It's a very Dragon Quest thing to have the gambling. We're just at this for, for hours upon hours. Yes, I am losing my money, but eventually I will get three sevens, and, uh, this will all be rubbing in people's faces, so... Anyway, so you keep playing as Miss Marvel, uh, you then, uh, as I took control of Iron Man, I then punched a few dudes, I shot a few dudes, you know, like as you do, and then weirdly, and this is a really weird thing, I'm on the, the Golden Gate Bridge, and the game didn't continue on me. The game didn't, like, I had taken all the enemies, and I was just chilling. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I've got to, like, keep, fly forward. So I flew as Iron Man, I flew up. And it told me, oh, you're leaving the area. So I flew down the bridge, and I continued flying down the bridge. Eventually, there was no more bridge left. The bridge ran out. And, uh, I was just like, okay, there's an obvious hole where, you know, where I should have been. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to land somewhere. And I fell through the bridge, and I fell down the world into oblivion. Eventually disappeared. I reloaded from a checkpoint, only to then be prompted, 
Hulk, was it not Hulkbuster? Actually, it did say that. It did say Hulkbuster available. But weirdly, I had actually wandered so far down the bridge, I had now walked to where the part of the intro sequence where you play as the Hulk was. So now, I was still Iron Man, I still attacked like Iron Man, but I walked like I was the Hulk. My arms were elongated, he had fingers for some reason, his fingers were going whack, and he had the wrong animations playing. I would like to remind people, this game came out three years ago, and they said they've solved the bugs. Or at least they said, we're only doing bug fixes now. It is the saddest opening ten minutes of the game I've experienced. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, because, like, I assume what happened was I, as I loaded the checkpoint, the game, you know, never made any note of me changing character. And to be honest, you only change character mid-level for this opening sequence and the end of the game. Every other mission in the game, you're always one character. You, you basically go as that one character the whole game. Um, and so, yeah, it makes sense that, like, oh, effectively, this model just suddenly applied to this other animation. And since they're all human, I don't think they're too weird animation-wise, so that's fine. It's just the Hulk is larger. I don't think I've got enough currency to really... Okay, I'm gonna bail, because we're just doing... We're just doing gambling at this point. I'm not getting anywhere. Uh, so there is a gym. I don't think I am really... ready for the gym? I think we can evolve a Pokemon before I actually go to the gym. So here's the daycare. We're finally at the daycare. So if you want to take care of a Pokemon and raise them, have a word with the wife. But uh, unlike Gold and Silver, it's it's one person now who takes two Pokemon. Uh, count it again. This is the third double battle we have seen. So anyway, so yeah, in the first ten minutes of the game, I had a confusing starting menu that spoiled the entire game for me. I then had a, uh, a glitch where Iron Man controlled, like, the Hulk, and I phased out of the world, and I actually skipped, and I swear, I skipped the entire part of that intro sequence where you legitimately did play as the Hulk. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, the whole sequence ends in a fight with Taskmaster, um, who proceeds to not appear in the rest of the game. I would like to note that. Uh, the game then goes, oh, okay, uh, Captain America somehow died in an explosion, and, uh, the Avengers went into hiding because they destroyed the entirety of San Francisco, and a bunch of people turned into, uh, not mutants, they can't use the term mutants, uh, they turned into inhumans because they gained superpowers, and some of those people, their superpowers was, uh, I, um, literally melted and I don't exist anymore. Or, like, you know, like, <laughs> they just got a deadly disease more than anything. But some people, like Miss Marvel, uh, got stretchy powers, and so they're like, okay, sure. So there's a bunch of people who are known as the Inhumans. They have gone into some kind of hiding because there's a, uh, um, was it AIM? The Advanced... I don't know, something. They're, they they make robots, but they're basically like, well, we somehow de facto became the leading company to lead a cure to the to the illness. And so Miss Marvel's chilling about, and obviously they're going to try and corral all the people with superpowers into a prison slash torture uh, lab. You know the kind, they experiment too much. Sure, okay. Uh, this game came out in 2020, by the way, so I just want to say this is a... Okay, I probably know it's a comic thing, so... Thanks for the follow, Panda! Uh, anyway, so the game continues. Miss Marvel basically, like, goes to their secret... Uh, lab. They have a secret kind of just, like, hideout. It's just like a, a water tower that she's decked out. Um, but real interestingly, she just logs onto a computer and it's like, Oh, look! It's a top secret AIM research, uh, server, and it's got a login, T Stark for Tony Stark, Iron Man. What could his password be? And she just types, I am Iron Man in all caps, and that's his password. Have a good night, Panda. Have a good one. So she just guesses this password. Anyway, she then 
suddenly is now chased by AIM because she obviously hacked the server. Also, she's a mutant, so okay. Look at this guy pacing back and forth. Apparently, you can use the game hall, and I just never figured out how. Uh, and then you put the... The... Oh, I never know what the name of that character is. I'm not even going to try it. I was going to call it the Schlauzer. I don't think it's called the Schlauzer, is it? Something like that. Uh, because I remember I've gotten the coin thing so I can use them. But then them being inactive. I'm not too sure what you mean. But the whole thing. Okay. Um, so anyway, so she's on the run. And then she decides to just stop running and catch a bus. And they don't chase her. Um, she then... Catches the bus to Utah, and obviously going to Utah means you will casually stumble across the flying ship the Avengers use. And casually, Bruce Banner the Hulk is chilling there. He's angry because you tried to steal Captain America's shield. Uh, that's, yeah, that character. I, I forgot what that character's called. It is S. Oh, I, know, I know it's pronounced like an S, but it's got like a name. It's like, it's like in English, we have the letter C, but it's like, C can also just be like the same co uh, consonant as S, but also it's sometimes the same consonant as K, and sometimes the same as CH. Like on its own. English is weird like that. Uh, old Z and the old S, but it's pronounced S. It's like a shluch. Shluch. It's a bit more like involved, right? Or is it actually just like, hard S? Well, you know what I mean. Just a sharp S? Okay. I'm learning more about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, she just stumbles upon I, uh, the, the Hulk. The Hulk then goes, oh, well, well Bruce Banner goes, oh, uh, you know, well, let's let's take back the, the ship or something. Let's go into an aim facility and steal, I don't know why I'm using water gun. I'm <laughs> like half asleep, I tell you. Um, let's steal some plans. Okay. Eventually, after like three hours, we get to this point where um, I'm finally introduced to the war table. Basically, the mission select. And at this point, uh, it prompted me with a bajillion side missions. So many side missions, and some that a lot actually looked like they were randomly generated missions. In most words, it's been replaced with double S, but not everywhere. I'm curious if I can take this Brazilia out just with the Fury Swipes. It's only level 12. I feel like I got this, but you could probably just use Mega Drain and I'm dead. Poison Sting ain't too, ain't too nice either, but should be okay. Want to guess how Roselia is called in German? Is it Roselia with, with the, the, the fancy S? Oh, Nonogram's getting very close to it. Oh, this trainer is also, like, super fun to fight against because they're all level 12. It is Roselia. Ah! <laughs> that, is a, <laughs> that is a very different name. Very, very different name. Uh, so anyway, so the random missions were random. I was actually prompted to basically do, like, a very generic mission. I don't think... It didn't really seem like the kind of quality that I had before. It was like, oh, you know, I was going through some set-piece areas. Uh, you know, some unique areas, they, they were, you had to like pull boxes, you had to do some fancy jumps, she had dialogue, um, through all the bit, German for Rose's Throws, just pronounced slightly, oh, like, like, the Italian is like Rosa, or something like that. Goldine, Goldine. Um. Yeah, so, so, this new level, this randomly generated level, it was like, the area was so wide and open, and there was just like, you could kind of go in a lot of directions, but there was a waypoint, and you just had to walk towards the waypoint. If you walked around, you were picking up randomized loot, and we get into the whole randomized, randomized loot mechanic, which was so dismal, because I would just be like, oh, you numerically are not high enough to, to you know, beat these enemies. So you just have to hit pause, hold down left trigger, and automatically equip all the better, um, you know, the better set items, basically. It was so dreary. Um, I also want to add as well that as I was doing some of these random missions, occasionally the game would prompt me, your power level is not high enough to even attempt this mission. Uh, now, for reference, I played the entire game on the hard difficulty, 
And what I realized is that there's like a baseline power level. This is just like your equipment's level, basically. It sums up and up, comes up as a number. And if your number is not high enough, you're not allowed to start the mission. Now, playing on normal, there's a certain baseline power level it's got going on. If you play it on easy, the power level is just dropped by five. If you play on hard, which I did, the power level is increased by five compared to normal. And then there's a very hard, which is five above that. But I played on hard the whole time. Um, at various points in the game, I was just told, you can't play the story, you are not high enough level. Oh yeah, 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 we're getting an evolution. So, so very important, very important. I'm probably gonna do the gym and then and then call it a day. We got we got like a handful of trainers on this route. Like it's probably like six or so. And I do have I do have space in my team. An empty Pokeball. Oh, I've got plenty of Pokeballs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you need an empty Pokeball in order to do it? I thought it just kind of happens normally. Preferably if he doesn't die before he... Well, okay, that's a bit awkward. That's a bit awkward. <laughs> that is a bit awkward. What happens when Ninkada dies? <laughs> They are growing properly. Thank you, person. Eh, it's okay. No, my gosh, Nonogram's evolving, finally! Now, Ninkada is amazingly good fun. You have alluded to it, but Ninkada, when he evolves, he evolves into... Look at there, look at there. He evolves into Ninjask. Now, he doesn't keep evolving, so Ninjask is a final Pokémon on my team. Uh... And he also is trying to learn Double Team, which is, I've written it down, Double Team is one of the moves I shall be keeping on him. Very, very, very important. I'm not going to use Sand Attack, we're going to stick with Double Team. He is one of the fastest. I think Electrode is the only one that's actually faster than him in this game. Um, no, he doesn't have a fun nature for his speed, unfortunately. Uh, Fury Cutter is not one of those moves, but I might as well use it for now. Um, yeah, as much as Fury swipes it, oh... Well, uh, it's kind of better than Leech Life, to be honest. Just keep spamming it. Uh, sand Attack, Double Team. You could use Sand Attack and Double Team, but you might as well just use Double Team. <laughs> Screech. I don't think Screech is one of my moves. Do I have a huge need for Screech? Mmm. You know, it kind of might be nice right now to have Screech. Just like, oh, you know, throw it in there. He's learning a lot of moves, though, ain't he? Now, very importantly, and you've alluded to this, if you have a spare ball and a spare slot in your party, evolving- <laughs> I love how he's dead. Evolving Ninkara gives you a Pokemon called Shedinja. Shedinja is an incredible- oh, he's also in the Premier Ball, nice. Shedinja is an incredible meme of a Pokemon because of that ability, Wonder Guard, super effective, hits. I only get to like say like four words. But what this means is that Shedinja, with his one health, is only hit by a move that is super effective. Which is an incredible ability, because that means so many moves, so many Pokemon, and so many Pokemon you'll go up against, can't do anything about him. Uh, yeah, he's got one Pokemon that like would actually hit him, so... The moves that actually I would hit him are Flying, Rock, Ghost, Fire, and Dark type. Now that is still five of the 17 types, but that's that's a lot of moves that he does resist. Um, and he's a pretty fair Pokemon, otherwise he's got 90 attack, which is a lot of attack. Special attack's not too great, but he's, he's rather decent, if a bit slow. Uh, now that being said, let's flip back around to... Uh, Ninjask, and I want to show you that speed. Marsh Tomp is two levels higher than him, and he's got 66 speed, and he's got a nature that stacks against him. Um, the rest of his stats are kind of okay, but again, his attack's really good, and that makes Ninjask a super amazing attacker. Um, I don't think Supersonic works. I don't think Supersonic works. I think it does have to be one of those, one of those types. 
Uh, but yeah, no, that means Ninjask is, like, actually super cool. So, that's why I'm gonna use Ninjask. Now, the only thing is, Ninjask is, uh, flying type. So that means his effectiveness on the next gym is kind of a bit moot, but... Uh, at least, you know, if we're dealing with a lot of electric type attacks. But you know who's, uh... You know what's an electric... Who's resistant to electric types? Marsh Tomp. So, I'm not too worried about this gym, to be honest. Might be fun to use uh, Ninjask a fair bit as well. And also, hey, I've got Shedinja as a fun, like, okay, sure. What moves does he actually know, by the way? The same moves I had. That's cool. That is rather interesting, it's the same moves. Is that the same moves as well? That is the same moves after I was done giving him moves as well. That's rather interesting. Fire, flying, dark, bug, ghost, right? Yeah, yeah, those ones. The air is tasty. Ew, stop eating it. It's my air. <laughs> this kid's stealing my air, bro. So now, after all the struggles of Ninkada is so weak, let's give him a go. Here comes Dojuo. Uh, he's still bug type, so I guess, uh, kind of watch out. But, like, look how much damage he does now. And that's Fury Swipes. That's supposed to be pretty low. That was not a very good Fury Swipes. Uh, he's got the better Fury. Fury Attack. I think uh, it is only uh, generated after the evolve screen. Probably is, yeah. I love how I use a fury attack. It hits twice. He uses a fury attack. It's five times. But hang on. What is this? Speed boost? Speed boost? That is correct. Ninjask is a crazy meme Pokemon because if you take a hit, you know, who cares? You speed boost. You go faster. You gain one, well, yeah, well, actually, you don't even get hit. You get one speed stat every turn he's out. This is an incredible move. It is so nice if you can somehow stall for attacks, because it means, you know, if someone is <laughs> somehow faster than you, not for long. Not for long, man. Oh, look, it's a Ninkada. I'm gonna use Fury Cut on him. We shouldn't do too much damage, because it's only ten- oh, really? What's the point of using Fury... Uh, Fury Cut if, uh, if uh, I'm just gonna get memed on? But yeah, now, before you ask, I do have a strat. I do have a strat, but oh my goodness. Only Deoxys and some new Pokemon are faster. Yeah, yeah. I still think Electrode is faster, but legit, like, they're not gonna get much faster than, than Ninjask, so. What is going on? I know he used Harden, but like, I wanted to flex, man. You're getting wrecked by five levels lower Ninkada. Because he keeps only hitting twice with Fury Attack. Oh my gosh. What is happening? What is my luck? What is my luck right now? I mean, yeah, I guess I'm speed boosting. I should have used double team, shouldn't I? And the new Regis, yeah, true. He's so fast though, he's so fast in the end. Just the speed boost makes it like super silly as well, yeah. Because I think there's some Pokemon like, um, uh, I'm not too sure if hidden abilities are in this game. Let's go back to everyone's favorite, uh, yeah, let's go to Shedinja, why not? So Shedinja is like, sort of, the same Pokemon? As long as he doesn't have anything super effective, uh... You can just, you can just, uh, not take damage. Also, as a good meme, you could use Double Team and set up on a Pokemon that- Oh, see, that, that's your problem though. There's a move that's super effective, and there goes your one health. And, unlike... Unlike Ninjask, Shedinja is not fast. Shedinja is not gonna take it, so. Gosh, he's, he's a gusty boy. Uh, so I think the only other Pokemon that can have it, uh, all have it with a, with a hidden ability in later games, and I'm not too sure if hidden abilities are in this game or not. Um, 
But if so, then that would be uh, Torchic and Carvana and, his, and their evolutions. Oh, and Yanma has it. Yanma has it in this game. Uh, not as a hidden ability, but like Yanma just generally has it. But I'm not too sure if you can... I'm not too sure if you can get Yanma in this game. Good old beauty fly. Still gusty. Still super gusty. So, anyway, so the Avengers game... Um, yeah, I would be constantly doing a story mission and then immediately prompted I can't continue the game because I am just not high enough level. Only at the very, very last mission of the game did it go, hey, you know, we're just about to start our final battle against um, Modok, I think, who's actually the villain in the films now. Or the villain in one film. Actually, yeah, he's the villain in one film. <laughs> um, I don't think I can wing it if I go right or go left, so I'm just going to go right again, go up again. Um, actually, yeah, 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 it's not enough health, not enough health. Um, uh, so they were like, we're almost ready, but we need some resources. And that was the first time they actually pulled the resource card on me. So it was just like, you had to smash robots or something like that. Zigzag side, oh, yep, he has another item. He has another item, good spotting. Please be another super potion. Hey, it's another super potion. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, so, but yeah, the, the game effectively became, and all the story missions started to become the same areas as the randomly generated levels. It was just, oh, they had some special dialogue, I guess. I hope you appreciate the Pokemon breeders yet again. Let's get that Fury Cutter spam going. Selling England by the pound here. Yeah, his attack is really good as well. Like, focusing on the attack is really nice as well. Taylo, a flying type. No sweat. Because we just keep using Fury Cutter. I've got my Fury Cutter chain going. We're getting the... So the good meme with Fury Cutter is that it does twice the amount of damage as the last hit. But it does have like a reduced accuracy, so it does mean at some point it is gonna miss. But it's still kinda funny while you keep doing it. In theory, it can keep going on in perpetuity. Which means every single one of these attacks is definitely gonna one hit whatever I'm hitting. Aaron? Nah man. Unless I miss. Although my speed is just going to be maxed out at the moment. We're still going! We're still going! <laughs> the chain continues! Oh, I love this attack. I love this attack. It's great. So, um, But yeah, the missions in the Avengers game, they all started to blur in with each other. What was... what... what... The first three hours of the story involving cutscenes and... And, uh, you know, like... Fun set piece areas was all gone. There was no fun set piece areas. You'd occasionally get thrown into like a bit with a boss, but attack value for what they're called is like 90. Yeah, oh, it is 90. Which is. Granted, Zapdos isn't supposed to be a physical attacker, but. I just fury cut that entire battle, by the way. That was incredible. Bro, I just used fury cutter so many times. You're not a trainer, you're just chilling there. You're playing them all! Oh my goodness. A great ball as well. Um, all of that stuff just blurred into each other. I was not really enjoying it. It just felt like a slog after a while. And then at some point, the game was like, okay, we're done, I guess. Actually, for the longest time as well. So you get Iron Man pretty early on, and then no one, weirdly. Then suddenly, uh, Miss Marvel decides to go get captured, and then uh, Black Widow shows up, and then uh, they all get angry, and they, uh, no, sorry. They go and they drive into a storm or something. They're fighting more robots, and uh, and uh, suddenly Thor just shows up out of nowhere, and then they find out Captain America's on the moon or on on a space station. They rescue him, and then it's just immediately, yeah, okay, we're ready to like take the final fight. Basically, um, there were some missions that happened in the middle, but like ultimately, this whole thing took 14 hours, where I probably played side missions for about seven of those hours, and three of those hours. 
where the actual, like, start of the game, like, the, the actual interesting stuff, the initial pitch of the game disappears, and it stops being a really fun game very quickly, and just becomes a numbers grind, basically. I keep having to, you know, wrestle around in the menus, because you can only pick up 11 of a certain slot equipment. Also, Wally's got the biggest house. And Wally's getting better by just living in a place with flowers. My daughter's boyfriend is a very driven and passionate sort of person. He's been digging a tunnel non-stop just so he can see my daughter. My daughter's a little concerned, so she goes out to the tunnel a lot. Oh my gosh, okay. Wally, how you doing? I lost you, Bino, but I'm not feeling down anymore because I have a new purpose in life. Together with my routes, I'm going to challenge the Pokemon gyms and become a great trainer. Please watch me, Bino. I'm going to become stronger than you. When I do, I'm going to challenge you to another bet. Oh my gosh, okay, sure. So it's an absolute slog, and at some point, I just finished the game, and I was like, oh, okay. Considering uh, bug types are rather weak, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, in general. Like, because a lot of bug types evolve quick. Um, you know, like, uh, like Beautifly and Dustox, they evolve at level 10, they're all done. Um, this is where the normal rank concert, uh, contest starts, so, uh, if you want to start contests, which I'm not doing this stream, it's a long can of worms if I get into this now. Um, I actually kind of want to, like, focus on this, you know, exclusively later, once I have the ability to do all the contests. For reference as well, these different places with the pokey blocks. Uh, there's different people here, and there is definitely one where there's no one there if you wanted to make a, a thing that's only yourself. But it does mean that, I, to be honest, I think having more players gives you better, you know, pokey blocks in the end anyways. And you can always use the link cable as well, so you can just play with, with that. Uh, the bug types, um, or the original Pokemon uh, were weaker later, like the stars were pretty strong, super high initiative, decent attack, but terrible defense and special powers. That is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and this one though, Dust Socks, I mean, he's level 20, so it's not like that, you know... I mean, it's about this point in the game, I guess, two badges, but... He's not actually, like, that ridiculously bad in anything, like, his speed is amazing. I guess his defense stats aren't great, but... You know... Like, he holds up. He does hold up, because he has a niche and a playstyle. Uh... Meanwhile, Dust Socks is kinda like, eh, it's just there. So... Uh, well, I think we've really only got one place to check out, and that's the gym. So, all I'm hoping for the gym is that, uh, you know, my guy doesn't get, you know, swept, basically. And I do have a, you know, handful of extra Pokemon. 61, 90, 45, 50, 50, 160, 456. Yeah, 456 is the base stat total. It's pretty good for level 20, to be honest. The starters will do better, and there's definitely going to be better Pokemon. Uh, I will also be rocking worse Pokemon on my team, so... Special D. So anyway, so, uh, we got the Electric-type gym. We are filled with Electric-types. This also means that, uh... I might get memed on. So, this guy starts off with an Electric level 18. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, man, I've just got physical attacks against... This. So Fury Cut is probably not going to be the greatest thing, but you know what? Oh, he's just going to switch Pokemon on me. Getting paralyzed and losing half my speed? Not the worst. But having to fight this guy? It is the worst. Listen, let's screech him. Look at that, get that defense down two stages. This is... This is why I need Screech. 83, 80, 75, 70, 70, uh, 101. Pidgeot. Yeah, like, Pidgeot is, like, a lot more balanced, but the speed isn't that. Granted, though, the speed is kind of like you just need to be better. If your speed is, like, tons better, it doesn't really, you know, mean a lot. But that being said, he's still got 90 attack. He can still work with that. He can still do something there. The only thing is 90 attack means he's going to hit himself kind of hard. Having Screech is like such a nice move whenever like someone comes up to you with Magnemite. Uh, 60, 45, 50, 90, 80, 70. Yeah, Butterfree is still pretty good though. Um, for like that special attack. But in general, yeah, like that base stat total is not as high as, you know, Pokemon that you... Well, I mean, yeah, even level 20 isn't that far away. You can get a lot of Pokemon at level 20. Pidgeot is a level 36 evolution. I understand that's going to be a much later, like, kind of go. 
Alright, Electric. Meet your maker. But I'm confused, I'm paralyzed. I'm doing okay, not getting hit by the confusion though. And yeah, Charizard, you're right, like, the starters are always crazy high, with Charizard being, you know, he's fast, he's got good special attack, and the rest of his stats follow through. Like, Charizard is great, for a lot of good reasons. We're gonna see if I can find two trainers. This gym's got puzzles! Isn't it fun? Yeah, actually, we're finally doing a puzzle again, isn't it? Uh, this guy has the greatest Electric-type Pokémon, that is Zigzagoon. Oh, he's doing the growl, he's doing the growl. He knows my strat, which is attacking. That was, that was a pretty good amount of damage even after a growl, although it was a crit, so... Very cool. Also, I guess he was faster than me for a moment, so... Oh. And yeah, oh yeah, but Mewtwo is Mewtwo, though. Dang it. I don't think I can take out this Zigzagoon if he's just gonna keep, like... I like how I'm faster than him again. The <laughs> paralysis doesn't matter anymore. I like how I said, you know, I've clearly got, like, Marsh Tomp primed and... He's got Thunderbolt! He's got Thunderbolt! Oh my gosh. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't even have enough Thunderbolt. Well, okay, this is the Marsh Tomp territory. So the nice thing about Marsh Tomp is that since he is ground type, none of his electric stuff hits him. Uh, Sixagoon can still do his good memes, but in general, Pipperoni's probably gonna carry his gym. Oh, I lost. Did he get another one? He got another one? Wow. Please be another super potion. Listen, that's way better than a super potion. <laughs> oh, hi there. How's it going, champion bound B and L? Watson, the leader of the Morville gym, uses electric type Pokemon. If you challenge him with water type Pokemon, he'll zap them. Bzzz. Meanwhile, me. And he's putting switch control doors all over his gym. Eccentric. Hey, go for it. Okay. Remember farming for the time you need to do the attack relearner. I don't, I don't, I, I never did the, the move relearner too much. But I know some people did. They would go for those hard scales. They would try their best to, to grind the pickup and get those hard scales. And that's just, oh, it's a lot of work, man. Because especially, because you, you don't know that you've got an item in this one unless you check that screen. Slacking with, oh yeah, true, because you can steal the items as well. So pretty much we got four trainers in this gym. They've all got various, uh, various electric type Pokemon. Um, and obviously you gotta hit the buttons to get up to the, to the gym. So, to the leader. Good old Voltorb. I probably, I don't know if I'm gonna get like thundered, but... Let's get the double team out. I'm under the impression if I use double team twice, I will save myself a bit of headache. Uh, true, yeah, if you can farm them, it's good, so. Anyway, this Avengers game, yeah, I got to the end. It just didn't feel like a good use of time. It was just like, here's a game designed around um, just taking, you know, like, oh, you gotta level up the characters. Which, by the way, I barely got to level up the characters as part of the story. I, I mentioned... Um, Thor and, uh, Captain America were so late in the story that you couldn't, um, you know about the Pokemon's X, yeah. Um, I got, I got them so late in the story that they didn't even level up in, you know, in any meaningful way. Wow, man! Charge! Original move! I think that's another reason why people like Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Well, because there's, there's real terrible games out there. Like, I, I guess at the end of the day, this is very, you know, they want you to be grinding it. Game is a service game so that you can get the resources, you do the dailies, that kind of stuff. But they're also shutting down the service and it kind of doesn't mean anything. And it never meant something anyways. You brute force most things with leveling. Well the, well, the worst part is, yeah, I played the whole game on hard. 
I didn't feel it at all. I felt it was a fairly normal game with a terrible camera while trying to emulate Batman Arkham Asylum. I really hated as well, I got to the Abomination fight and I could keep jumping out of the level because they didn't, you know, contain the walls very well. Um, but in the Abomination fight, I was expected to suddenly know that uh, when the character, like, hitting the B button to dodge, if you hit it multiple times, it actually dodges further. Like, there's three stages. And so I've just been hitting B whenever the dodge mechanic comes up. Because apparently powering just doesn't really work. Um, Metatype, my favorite electric type, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't even reward. Like, there's no agency in playing this game. That was a whole trainer, by the way. I'm like, I'm enjoying finally having Ninjask. I am kind of confused that, like, man, you know, this this did take a fair bit of time to walk all the way up here. Because um, I was expecting to get at least uh, the next Pokemon, which is after this. Unlike, say, Far Cry, where you can explore, but that doesn't let you skip content. Oh, exactly, yeah, yeah. But I feel like there's a degree of, like, skipping content and then, like, you know, giving the player multiple avenues on the same, like, goal. And I think Breath of the Wild really got that because the goal is, like, you know, the shrines. It's like, you can find the shrines in really any way, and you can kind of do the shrines in multiple ways. There's a lot of that, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm probably just gonna... <laughs> we'll do a Marsh Tomp sweep. I don't think there's particularly anything... Ooh. Actually, you know what? Well, nah, we don't need to do a Shedinja sweep, so... Anyway, hit the buttons, hopefully you figure out how to get to the end. That's right, you hit the button on the left. It's a real simple puzzle at the end of the day. Okay, here we go, Gym Leader. And you can miss, uh... Go to more difficult regions due to content there first, but the progression scale is only a uh, number of things done, not what you actually do, and you can miss them because you don't need all the max out. So if you get one and you really don't like one, you can just say no and don't do it. Yeah. I like how this guy just says, like, oh, <laughs> I've been spending my time building traps. Yes, yes. So, anyway, we got a good old Watson, everyone's favorite gym leader. He's actually not as bad as Brawly, in my opinion. And he's not that high level. Like, 22 isn't as bad as it was before. Um, I can't use much up because he's got a uh, magnet pull, actually. I can't use much up. Um, so, anyway, this Magnemite here, uh, Electric Steel, of course. Uh, he's got Thundershock, Supersonic, Sonic Boom, and Thunder Wave. Very normal stuff for, um, <laughs> for, uh, a Magnemite. Nothing really too weird. Uh, he's now got Voltorb, which, uh, I guess will continue going on. Voltorb has Soundproof, so I don't use a sound attack on him. Uh, it has, uh, Rollout, which is, you know, the terrifying move if he keeps that going. Uh, Sonic Boom, of course, Spark, and Self-Destruct. Not very nice if he uses Self-Destruct, but he... he I don't think he usually starts with it. And finally, his Cream de Crop Magneton, uh, which is the evolution of Magnemite. Same ability, uh, Magnet Pull, uh, Shockwave, Supersonic, Sonic Boom, and Thunder Wave. So, almost the same moveset, but instead of Thunder Shock, it's Shockwave, which is a much better attack. Um, I guess, yeah, I've got a super effective type, and uh, he's not particularly that strong a boss. I could have killed it with the Immortal Pokemon, but I think using Mudshot three times is kind of hilarious. Especially given how little I've been using, well, how much I've been trying to avoid using Marsh Top this whole stream, and then it's just like, yeah, yeah, he didn't really have any answer to that, did he? Nothing at all. So, anyway, uh, we can now use Rock Smash, which means we can continue the whole game. The starters in Gen 3 are pretty cool, yeah. And then he gives you Shockwave, which is a very nice attack. I actually think I've got Shockwave as a move on a later Pokemon. So, I shall teach that move, importantly, to a later Pokemon. But for now, I think that's it. Give me the... Give me the thank you, man. <laughs> Stars in Gen 1 and 2 were nice and good, but now they got secondary types. Um, I did like Gen 6, where it was like every Pokemon had a, another type that was strong against, like the, um, you know, like, grass is weak to fire, but then they also made it so the grass type was fighting and the psychic, and the fire type was psychic as well, so he could also use psychic attacks. 
Um, I would really like if it went the opposite way, so it's like, maybe it's like a grass psychic and a firefighting. Although, don't do firefighting again, please. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I kind of would like that kind of, uh, rotation. Um, but yeah, other than that, I guess I've been rambling. Uh, my eyes are tiring. My eyes are going out, so... Uh, I shall save the game here. We've gotten another badge eventually, at the end of the day. But there were a lot of trainers on the way, before the rival, uh, looked at concert, uh, contest, didn't actually participate in one. We got, uh, two new Pokemon on the team, uh, after evolving one. Isn't that kind of weird? Uh, and we've got a whole area ahead of us, uh, which will definitely feature new Pokemon. I can guarantee that, because literally, to get to the next town, you have to go through the area where I can get a Pokemon. So we'll say that. Uh... Water Steel, what did the fire get? Uh, oh, it was Fire Fighting for three generations. There was Blaziken in this generation, which was Fire Fighting. And then they would have um, Infernape in fourth gen, which was also Fire Fighting. And then they'd have um, Embor, I think, which was Fire Fighting. So people were like, why do they keep doing Fire Fighting? So. Anyway, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. Yeah, yeah, it was fight. Yeah, fire fighting three generations in a row. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this stream and uh, <laughs> you don't you don't hate the sound of my voice after a while, you can follow or subscribe on YouTube where the VOD appears um, in some amount of day, some amount of hours afterwards. Um, I'll be continuing on this game pretty much every week. So next week, we're doing it again. Uh, pretty much all the goods. Uh, if you can't get enough of uh, me talking, I guess find all the old VODs on YouTube and if you want to you can follow my Pleroma m.bndo.com just go there and you'll find it uh, I might rant about hardware I don't know I don't think I'll be ranting about anything for a bit not until Computex which is the end of the month so anyways I'm sleepy tired good night peoples I'm gonna conk out I'm like the kind of guy who goes shoo shoo that's how I sleep <laughs>